<laughs> we're live we're live yay is our, our sound is on sound is on we're good can we can we get some thumbs up in the we chat get thumbs up that you can see me and hear me it's always a little bit of a crapshoot and we just hope it works out so if you are here and you can hear me i'm so glad i'm Teresa coates i'm the national educator for shannon fabrics and we are back with sew together tuesday so it is the kickoff for season nine we have been liveless for uh, three weeks now. Hawk and I have taken a little bit of time to get ahead of this next tour and the next one. So uh, we have taken a little bit of time and we are back at it. So we are finally on the East Coast tour. So everybody who has been asking for us on the East Coast, we finally made it. We're here, we did one across the whole South and now we're heading up the coast. Um, and we'll talk about what our next stops are at the end of the show, so stick around, but we are very excited. So we are here in Weaverville, North Carolina at a little shop called Five Little Monkeys Quilt and Sew. If you got a chance to watch uh, the behind the scenes camera earlier, Hawk is dressed up like a monkey today. <laughs> 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 which is perfect <laughs> so i'm very happy to be here so come on come on in this is this is i wanted to introduce you to angie now i'm gonna forget how to pronounce your last name again lamory lamory um because i have it in my head a different way so we're not going to pronounce that out loud so this is angie she's the owner you and your husband are the owner okay yep, we're um team. good that's nice that works out really well that way yeah. We've managed five years without murder. That's great. Or divorce. Or divorce, which is, <laughs> which is more often the result, unless you listen to a lot of true crime. And then, you know, there's a lot of murder there. But anyway, we're very excited they're here. It is your birthday week. It is. Right? So five years you started. Five on Sunday. That is super exciting. And, you know, a couple of them in the COVID craziness. So, uh, it, uh, yeah, almost half of them in the <laughs> yeah. COVID craziness. Yeah, we did but not they, know when we were starting. <laughs> but you've made it. So I was in the shop about three years ago when I came through the area. And I have friends that live in the area. So I like stopped by really quick, came in and saw the store. And then when we were planning our East Coast, I was like, hey, could we come to your place and we could make a monkey? So that's what we're doing today. So your store is kind of unique. I, I like it. I'm, we're trying to come out. We're not trying to come out. We are coming out of the area that like in the South, a lot of the stores are like everything stores. Yeah. I've noticed that everything stores and we're, kind of, we're back in a quilt shop again, which is kind of interesting for me. So we've talked about a few of the things that are different about your store and the things that I like about your store and why I wanted to come back. So tell me what are the things that you feel like makes your store unique? So when we first started, we tried to, we weren't an everything shop because we don't have a big enough space to have right. an everything shop. Um, but we tried to carry a little bit of everything as far as fabric to see what people wanted. Mm -hmm. And it became clear quickly that people were looking for things they couldn't find anywhere else. Got it. So we pride ourselves on being the weirdos in the quilting world. You um, made it for weirdos. We, yeah. We're, <laughs> we think weird is the highest form of compliment. <laughs> so um, our stuff is we carry a lot of Alexander Henry. A lot. We actually own the domain name nerdfabric.com. So we have a huge selection of geeky stuff, math stuff, science stuff, pop culture, um, comic books. I'm a big comic book person. So so lots of novelty prints. Lots of novelty prints. If and you're looking for something weird and you can't find it somewhere else, hit me up. I probably could fill that in. And so. what and what's the URL? Our our Yours. regular website is five monkeyquilts.com. Yeah. But if you put in uh, nerdfabric.com, you'll find us that way too. Which is great. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. So you have a ton of patterns as well. I noticed you carry a lot of books. You have all the Alexander Henry and you've got a nice little selection of cuddle that you've we do gotten recently. I love cuddle. Um, I started putting cuddle on the back of quilts a long time ago. Yeah. And still, anytime I get to pick what's going on a shop sample. In fact, we have a shop sample on the rack right now that's getting some cuddle lux on it. Nice. I'm really excited because nice. I'm going to keep that one when it's done. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> Those are the best. Be in my couch. Course. Those are the best. Very so. good. So we're here doing the monkey, obviously. Five monkeys. We're doing monkeys. We might have five by that's the end. Theme. Yeah. Yes. So we're doing that. And she uh, she has the kits available online. So the kits um, are on that five monkey quilts. Yes. Right. Um, so make sure because the URL is a little different than the name. So yeah, make sure you remember that. Screen. Everybody's um, got it. So you can find all of those kits there. So if you want to make the monkey just like I'm making, you can do that. She has that fabric. She also has one that's a C3. So we'll talk about 
the Cuddle 3. So we'll talk about the difference between those and why you might choose one or the other and which one you like better. But they can find all that. Anything else? Oh, with the Facebook Lives. Yeah. I almost forgot. So you guys do Facebook Lives every week? We do. So not only is our website fully shoppable, 98% of what's in my shop is in, on my website. We do Facebook Lives three times a week. We just switched our time to be 6 o'clock. So Monday, I always demo how to do a thing. So much Got like it. what Teresa does in her videos is what I do on Mondays. Sometimes it's quilting, sometimes it's mm -hmm. clothing, sometimes it's embroidery, sometimes it's whatever I'm in the mood for. Right. So Monday <laughs> is how to do a thing because mm -hmm. my, I feel like my calling in life is to help people learn not only how to sew something, but why. <laughs> We bonded over yes. this because we both <laughs> love the why do I do it that way? I'm a Gen Xer. I need to have proof. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay? So deny everything, demand proof is the is the motto of our entire generation. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it's all about the why and the how and the tool that made the thing happen. Right. Wednesday, we do a sale. We do a live sale at six o'clock. One week, it's discount. The next week, it's the brand new stuff that just came in. So we alternate those oh, six o'clock cool. on Wednesday. That's a comment sold sale which means you can do it on live, live, live on Facebook or in the app. We also have an app you can download from your app store. Um, and then Friday, we do what we call Funky Friday. My friends call it Angie TV. <laughs> we just talk about whatever I feel like talking about for 15, 20 minutes, usually. So like last Friday's video was all about this. Mm -hmm. It was all about sewing Mitch. It was all about making the robe. It was all about how to do the things and um, why this is cool. Yeah. So yes, so follow <laughs> us on Facebook. We're on Facebook, yeah. we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok. Um, we are on YouTube. We have an app. There's the no reason you can't find it. Right, right. We are. And then when you're in yes. Western North Carolina, yes. just outside of Asheville. We are 15 minutes from downtown Asheville. Yeah. We are there also 15 minutes from the Tennessee line. So, you know, yeah. yeah. We're not too far from anywhere that's in no. that corridor. Yeah. So. So come visit the shop, super fun, but also visit them online. So. Right. Absolutely. All right. Okay, so we didn't show the shop. Can you do a little, do a little, a little look walk around through. real quick? Go. A little so tour show tour. people. How bright the the one of the fun things about this shop is it is it's just so colorful. I love the way that it's arranged. It's super fun. And don't forget to show the cuddle up the stairs because that's pretty show fun. Show up the stairs. I like the uh, I like the display right. there. It's pretty got, fun. Oh, that is the pattern up. wall. Right. So you can just <laughs> walk up the stairs and run your hand switch. along the side and it feels so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to the audience. It. All right. A bit. Somebody said the audience wasn't going to be on camera. That was not true. That's never <laughs> true. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> it's the way we fold. All right. So let's do this. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So today we are doing Mitch the Monkey, which is a funky factory, funky friends factory um, pattern, which I love. You guys sell some of the patterns here. They have them online. Yes. We have a question already. Are we doing a giveaway? Oh. Who? I don't know if I will ever remember this. Well, I've okay? made it so that you don't have to, so yeah. it's fine. Yeah, it's great. This That's why we fun. have him along. It's this awesome. Is, this is our shtick. <laughs> so it really isn't a shtick, though. I do always forget. So please do share the video. At the end, we will draw a winner, and uh, someone will win a beginner box. We'll give that away. So make sure that you stick around so that you know that you won. And uh, we'll announce that winner, like I said, at the end of all of this. All right. So make sure you share that video. Share it with your friends, your sewing groups, all of that good stuff. If you are on Facebook, you can do that. All right. So is that all I needed to do? Now. Okay. Now we can get started with Mitch the Monkey. Now Woo! we can sew. All right. So now this is the pattern we're doing. I love Funky Friends factory patterns. If you haven't realized... Stuffies are kind of my favorite things to do. So we always want to do one every season. Um, and so this time it worked out perfectly. <laughs> We're like five little monkeys. It's got to be a monkey and the monkey's super cute. So we have three little monkeys to show you. Not five little monkeys. So show these guys. We'll talk about the differences between them at the end. Okay. So I just want to show you there are some differences. A couple of uh, one that I made, one that um, our brand ambassador Mary made. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate it. And one I believe that Gail made, but I say it and I don't know that. Hey, I think that uh, I think Gail made it, but I'm not sure. Okay, so thanks to whoever made the other one. Um, and so today we're using a bunch of different. Uh, we're using a couple of different fabrics and um, a bunch of tools. So it should be pretty fun. Let's look at the ingredients list. So if Jeremy can um, pop that up there, is that up there? Okay. So what you're oh, going to need... By the way, who's Jeremy? And, wh oh. and where's Michael? Oh, yeah. Before we go too far, Jeremy is in today because Michael had a baby with his wife. 
Um, so Jeremy's here today, who's our videographer, and thank you, Jeremy, for stepping in. I appreciate it. Um, so I'll be calling out his name the whole time. All right, so what you're gonna need for this project is a piece of fabric. Technically, what it calls for in the pattern is a 15 by 15 and three quarter inch by 44 inch piece of Lux Cuddle hide in truffle. You can use any color of hide if you want to, but this is the one we're using today. I would suggest that you buy a half a yard. If you need to get it otherwise, she does have the kits and these are cut to those sizes, correct? Okay. They're, Angie thinks so. Graciously. Okay. They're graciously cut is what she said. So, um, and then an eight by 22 piece of the cuddle sand, which is what we use for the hands, the face, the inside of the ears and the bottom of the feet. All right. So you're also going to need the Mitch the monkey pattern which will come in your kit if you buy the kit from Five Little Monkeys. You'll also want to have the 9014 stretch needle, polyester thread, a felt tip marker or ballpoint pen, your rotary cutter and mat. So at least the mat, you might want to cut this out with a rotary cutter. A craft knife. I love the Olfa SAC-1. You want micro serrated scissors. You get the ones from Fomori. I think I have my Karen K. Buckley's today. Uh, long flower head pins from Clover. Poly pellets, which are optional from Fairfield World stiletto and pressing tool from by Annie and the stuffing you can use the um silky polyfill from Fairfield World or we're using air light today which is what five little monkeys carries and have on their website as well as some embroidery thread for doing the embellishment on his face and toes okay and we'll talk about a couple of different ways of doing it on his face um that are different than doing it just by stitching it, but you can absolutely just stitch it, okay? The other one that I didn't get on there is, um, if you want to, I'm gonna show you a different way of doing the face that will use water-soluble stabilizer. So, but it's really just if you wanna do it that one funky little way that I'll show you how to do, okay? Cause I like making things a little funky. Um, a funky monkey? A funky monkey, yeah, exactly, it's perfect. <laughs> it combines everything together into one, it's great. Okay. So these are the kits. So let's show these. These are the kits that are available. See if we can get that without light. Do you need me to change anything? No, I'll just do this. Okay. So you, this are the kits that are available. You'll get the pattern and then the fabric and some little eyes and some threads in there. Okay. Same goes for here. This one is with the Cuddle 3. So this is just with a flat, the flat cuddle for all of it. So if you're brand new to making stuffed animals, I will say that the flat cuddle, the Cuddle 3, is easier to work with. The Lux Cuddle ones will be um, fluffier finish. So there's no difference in those two colorways or those fabric selections online. And they, if they want to pick one or the other, they need to put that in the notes. I think so. So if you go to, to <laughs> if you go to uh, Five Little Monkeys website to mm -hmm. order this kit online, yeah. you need to specify what color uh, or what fabric choice. Right. You would so like especially if you want, because the, the Lux Cuddle Hide in Truffle is the like dominant one or whatever. So make sure that you spe specify if you want the cuddle, the flat cuddle. Okay. And she's got both and they include the eyes, the thread, the fabrics and the pattern. All right. And they're $24.99. Okay. I had to make sure. Um, okay. There you they're go. $24 that answers All questions right. in the chat. Okay. You're, there you're you go. getting them from five monkey quilts.com. They're $24.99. $24.99. Yep. And okay. she will ship them. She has them obviously right here ready to go so and they include the go. pattern they include the pattern which is so let's talk about the pattern just a little bit you can make it at 100 percent. that's what these two guys are so if you want to show these two these two are at 100 percent. okay so they will look a little bit different depending on how you stuff it so um people will always be like they look like they're different sizes they're not they're the same size just stuffed differently um different fabric will do different things so um this one is the, the hide. This one is Lux Cuddle Heather Frappe is what this fabric is because um, we're uh, focusing on Heather and I wanted to see what it would look like in it. It is Shannon Fabrics uh, Fabric, fabric of the for month. the month. Uh -huh. and I really like it. This one is uh, made by Mary and this one is at 120%. Okay, so you can see this guy is a lot let's, bigger. Let's do a, let's do a, a, a monkey a foot paw, to foot? A monkey paw comparison. There we go, foot to foot. That's what a that's what a twenty percent increase looks like in size. So okay. maybe more than and you, you can, were expecting, right? And you can see, I mean, the height difference is is big. Like, yeah, it's a big difference, hundred percent, one hundred twenty percent. So you can make whatever size. The pattern obviously at one hundred percent. If you've never made a stuffy, I still think you could do it at one hundred percent. But if you want them a little bigger, 
you can totally do it. Okay. So the first thing I do is I get my pattern to the size that I want and then I tape it up. I brought some, I have some uh, step outs here to show you. Maybe just bring it on over here. So this is the 120%. So you can take and you can scan this in if you have the, the pattern and then you can print it out poster style and make it at 120%. All right. And then I just cover it with tape to kind of laminate it. And that works out really, really well. So you can absolutely blow it up like this. If you go to funkyfriendsfactory.com on the blog part, maybe Ellen has the URL for me. Um, that she tells you how to blow it up and make it larger. And she tells you a couple different ways. You could also take it to the copy shop. All right. And that's a C-O-P-Y, not the, the coffee shop, the coffee shop. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it always gets misheard. Um, so then you can have it, tape it up. I just use regular old, like I literally just like taped the pieces together first and then I cover it in packing tape. All can right? you do that before you cut it out? I do that before right. I cut it out. So yes, so tape your pieces when they're still on the paper here, then you cut them out and you have these big pieces. All right, so I have these here, because one, I wanted to show you how to do this. And I also want to show you just the difference in the sizes. So things get remarkably easier when you make them bigger. So this is at 120 and this is regular size, 100%. All right, this one I clearly have used. All right. So they get bigger. So if you're new to this, this is a great way of doing it. Somebody was asking today some of the other patterns. And there are definitely Funky Friends factory patterns that are easy to do at 100%. Some that are much easier to do larger. This one I feel like is a kind of an either or. Like I've done it twice now, at a, well, almost three times, at the 100% and it's fine. Okay. It didn't freak me out. There's a couple little areas we'll talk about. All right. Okay, so once I've got my pattern and I've got it taped, then I want to make sure that I have things, if I can find one that I've done that with, marked on the opposite side. So sorry, it's a little bit ugly because I've used it. But once I trace it, then I'm going to kind of transfer some of those markings so that when I do the reverse, I can easily see those. And I put my very squiggly little grain line on there. All right, so when I trace it on the, on the fabric, I can lay it this way and then I can flip it over and I can still see what my base is lines are supposed to be. So you make sure you transfer all of that stuff over. So if you check out, so here I'll pull out one of these patterns. So this is what I do. This is where people go awry. I will tell you, this is the first mistake that people make is when they trace these out, they just say that this is the headpiece. Well, you can see there are all sorts of markings on here. And when you're putting this together, she's going to tell you to sew, like one of the things that we do is we sew from A to B, but not B to D, I think is what that one is. Um, we're just going to sew this part. But if you haven't marked that this is B, you really, you might think that you need to sew that whole thing or that it might be this way. You have no idea which way to sew it. So make sure you put all of these markings on there. Okay. The other thing that I did is wherever I wanted to leave a turning hole, when I transferred it, I put little dot, dot, dots. Because what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go in here and put my little stay stitching line because these I'm going to have to hand sew later. Okay, so it's like when we do the throw and anything else like that, like I want to do that stay stitching line so that I can sew it up. All right. So that I did a little bit differently. I also made it so that we are going to stuff the arms in this pattern. She actually has you um, she has you build the arms and then stuff them and then put them into the into the monkey first. And then you do all the outside sewing and stuff. And I realized, um, thanks to Mary, because she was like, that was a little hard. And I was like, all right, let me try it. And it is a little harder. So I just added a stuffing hole to the arm is what I did. So I made a little mark on mine. So just in the side of it, I made a little mark where I want to stuff it. And I'm going to leave that open instead of sewing it shut and stuffing it first. All right. So that's a difference in the pattern. Um, trying to think if there was something else that I did differently. And I think that was the bulk of that part. Um, there is a couple other little things that I'll show you when we get there. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to go in and I want to stitch all of those little stay stitching lines. I feel like it's the easiest way to start. Um, so I'm going to do that first and then we'll start building some pieces. So do we have any questions yet? We've got one. It's kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but okay. just to make, just to, to clarify the mm -hmm. eyes that are in the kit, safety eyes. They are buttons, I believe. Oh, okay. Yep. She's got little buttons. So they are buttons guys. So right? if you do have littles. You need to get some safety eyes instead. You should get some safety eyes, or if they're real little and they're going to suck on it, then make sure that you're doing, you can do an embroidery. So you could actually do like machine embroidery or just do like big satin stitches um, for the eyes and just make little eyes on them. 
Okay. okay. So you can use whichever you'd like. All right. All right. All right. So, um, and I have a bunch of safety eyes. Yeah. We'll talk about those a little bit more later. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get my machine set up. So I'm using the polyester thread. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So I'm using my Mettler. I'm using white thread today. I would suggest that when you're doing this, you use a matching thread. I'm using the white just so it'll show up and you guys can see a little bit better. All right. So I've got my Mettler thread. I just switched my needle today. So it is a, um, a brand new 9014 stretch needle. You'll notice I do not have my walking foot on. And if you what? <laughs> if you know anything <laughs> about me, you know I love my walking foot. Okay. But what I have found is that if I'm using it for cuddle, it doesn't work as well. All right. So I want to use well when I'm using it for cuddle with stuffed animals. There was the caveat. There we go. Then I want to use just my regular foot and it's a lot easier. So this is just a regular old foot and I want to do it so that my quarter inch is going to be off this edge. So I could, let me reset my. So when it is normal, it is right in the middle here. All right, and it's gonna come right down the middle of that foot. Well, I want a quarter inch seam. And so if I want a quarter inch seam, this is a, a funky little tool that I have that she also has. This is um, just a seam allowance marker, seam allowance ruler. And she has those there on her website as well. And so I can that, stick it in here. Sure, sure what it looks like. There we go. That's what it looks like new. Okay, so you can mark your seam allowance and then this guy you can tack onto, it'll stick onto the bed of your machine. Uh, it works really well if you're using like a featherweight or something like that, that doesn't have the markings. On a newer machine like this, you got all the markings, so you don't need this guy necessarily. But um, this will help you find those quarter inches or half inches precisely. So if I do this, I put my, put my needle down through the hole that's in there and I can see that my edge, so right here, the edge of my fabric would run right on the inside of my toe. So I could use that, but what happens, what I have found is that if I do that, this whole area here that's open in the middle, so this whole area right here, this is where the edge of the fabric would be. And what it will like to do is get caught up on here or start to flip up. So what I wanna do is use this side of the foot to kind of hold my fabric in place and make the stitching easier, okay? So I wanna move my fabric all over so that my half inch is on the edge of my foot. So what I'm gonna do, hold on, crank that up, put my foot up and I'm gonna move my needle over. So on my machine here, I'm using the baby lock crescendo and I'm just gonna move that guy over all the way. So I can move it three and a half over and then I can stick this needle down the hole and make sure that you do this with a hand crank. Don't pop your needle down with the little button because if it's in the wrong place, it will break your needle, okay? So if I put my hole in here, I can see that the edge of my fabric is gonna be the edge of my foot, okay? So if that makes sense, yay. Yay. If it doesn't, ask a question, I'll try to clarify, all right? But what that does is it holds all the fabric down as it's going underneath the toe of the foot, all right? So I've got my, my needle in the right position, which is great. I've got my tools. Oh, and I did have this one to show you. So this is the Creative Grids uh, seam guide, which does the same sort of thing. And then I can stick this under here and I can put this down. And this is kind of a bit movie in here, but if I move it over to one side, I pop it down, there's my quarter inch. Okay, so then I've got a, I've got a quarter inch seam allowance there. So it's a, just a good way to figure out where it's at. This is a definitely a quilting ruler, like for half square triangles, but it works well for that. Okay, all right. Okay, let me know if you have questions. All right, so now I'm just gonna pop this in over here. So now it seems weird because I have such a big area, but I have to remember my needles over here and that's gonna be my quarter inch seam allowance. Pardon me while I get my foot pedal back. All right, and I'm just gonna stitch right along here. I am gonna, Move that up to a three stitch length. So I like to make my stitch length a little bit longer. My crescendo here will kind of power through. So if you have a higher end machine, it'll definitely power through the fabric just fine. 
if your machine doesn't want to move through it quite as nicely, you might have to open it up a little bit more. But I would say you don't want any stitches that are bigger than that. Okay, so you want kind of small, like on the smaller end of working with cuddle stitches. Normally I'm like, make them bigger, but we're going to stuff this thing. So I just want to get this. I'm not being super careful where I'm starting and stopping because it'll get caught in the seam or it'll be there for me to use. One way or the other. Okay, there we go. So I got those done and then I want to do the arm. So this is what I did on all of them that, oops, sorry, that I made is that I just stitched all of these first. And then I also know that that's where I'm not going to stitch when I sew them together. Okay, so it's already kind of marked for me that I'm like, oh yeah, let's leave that open. Don't forget. All right. Okay, I think, oh, one more on the back. And this is not just one more. This is half of all of them, but the other halves, in this case, you've already, right. already sewn. Right, exactly. So you would do that on all the legs, all the arms, the back, the tail. I forgot about the tail. Okay, so all of those, you're going to do this. All right, I'm going to get the ones that we have here done. All right, so all of the pieces, kind of interesting because all of the pieces are actually stuffed once you finish it. So you're going to sew it all together and then stuff all the separate pieces. Um, which is, but they're all separate pieces, which kind of is what makes it different. So like the, uh, the elephant. So when we're doing the elephant, you stuff the whole elephant and everything gets stuffed at one time. And this one, we're going to like stuff individual pieces. So, okay. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to start with the, uh, let's start with the ears and then we'll do legs and arms. Okay. Oh my pieces sort of organized. If you are doing this at home, I seriously suggest that you lay them out like this. And then when you take your, when you have your piles of stuff, let's see if I can find my pattern. You're going to lay them out like this and keep your pattern piece with it because it's really easy to not know exactly what that's talking about. So like when it says for ear dart, when she tells you to sew the ear dart, you're like, which one is the ear dart? Um, this is what she's talking about. And I don't write all of those little things on there, but it's nice to have this to reference back to. All right. Just easier. And especially on some of the pieces, they get very weird shaped that you cannot recognize, like which one is the mu muzzle and which one is the chin. I don't know. I have to look at the pattern piece. <laughs> okay. So if you keep those pieces nearby, it's helpful. All right. So let's do an ear. All right, so we've got our ear pieces. I mark them. These I did not mark in the middle because I didn't want it to accidentally show through. So if I'm using a lighter cuddle, I don't want to write on the back of it because it'll come through. So the, the sand, any of them that I did mark, I can't see anything on this side, but I just wanted to be careful. I know white, light yellow, light pink, light blue, all of the light ones can um, show through sometimes. So be careful what you're marking with. Okay, the Lux Cuddle will never show because that's just how it is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start pinning. And as always, we're going to pin at one end. Then I'm going to pin in the middle. And then I'll pin at the other end and then pin in between. Okay, and I cut all of these out using my rotary cutter, except for one little thing that I had to cut out this morning. Um, and that works totally fine, but have your vacuum really close because it will be messy. Uh, you can also use the uh, Lux Cuddle or <laughs> the Lux Cuddle Cutter. No, it is not. It is the Ulfa SAC-1, <laughs> but it is now mine and it is for Lux Cuddle, okay? You could totally use this for cutting yeah. all... <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can use this um, to cut all your Lux Cuddle and it will leave less of a mess. Um, when I'm doing stuffed animals, I often use a rotary cutter or just scissors because I kind of like the fine edge that it gives me. So there really is, you know, it's six of one, half dozen of another. Okay, and I'm going to pin from either side here as I work my way around. So I kind of go back and forth, not necessarily perfectly, but I'll always put some that pin from the other side just to keep it a little bit flatter. All right, so I'm going to sew around this edge here. All right. Okay, do we have any other questions in there? 
We're doing all right. I think we're doing all right. Okay. Jackie's on it, I'm sure. She's very good at this. The, the kit is big enough to cut the fabric at uh, uh, the pattern at 120%. I don't know. Probably. Um, probably. She said she cut them generously, but I would literally have to lay the pattern out to be able to tell you because she made the kits the way that I'm making it today. But I can check it afterward and post about it. We'll do that. Okay. So I'm just going to take my time with this because what I want to do is get a little bit of a curve here. And if I hurry, I'm not going to get that curve very nice. Okay. So don't be afraid to kind of pick it up, but you can see how this edge slides underneath the toe there and it keeps it nice and flat. Okay. You can use your um, pins as a steering wheel or you can use your little stiletto. What's that stiletto? It's my favorite stiletto. What's your favorite stiletto? The my, my Annie who? stiletto. And it's <laughs> <laughs> Hawk loves it when I talk about the stiletto. I do. I really, yeah, I really do like it though. It's a really good one. So it has um, the really sharp little point that lets me kind of grab things and move things around. So it works super duper well. I don't use them all the time for making stuffies because sometimes I need to just get my fingers in there. But it does work really well for getting things underneath the foot at the very end, uh, which we will use a few times for sure. So once you're to here in the pattern, she suggests that you trim this down and. In the pattern, she's always making them for use with cotton. So if I were making this out of cotton, I would for sure need to trim this down. I don't have to. I'm going to show you. Let's see if I can get this to turn. I might need my handy dandy sew together Tuesday pen. Slash point turner. Slash point turner. Exactly. <laughs> Your turner. Okay. And I can use this guy to bend it out. So this one is not clipped at all and it seems to be just fine. This one I did clip. I don't know that you guys can tell any difference really, but I can feel there's like weird spots in there because it's like <laughs> got V's cut out of it. And this way it's just like thick all the way around. So it's kind of a difference. And the ears don't see? get stuffing. The ears so, don't get any stuff. So maybe in. having a little extra seam allowance in there kind of gives them a little more it's shape. It's fine. I trimmed it and, and clipped curves to see if it would make any difference. And I don't feel like it makes any valuable difference. So I would just leave it like this. Okay. So we're going to do both the ears. All right. And then we're going to tackle the head. So this is the part that gets a little bit funkier. We're just going to get ready for sewing the face by sewing the top of the head. So I'm gonna sew from A to B. So this was a little bit different and I had to look at the instructions a couple times because what I wanted to do was sew this dart first and you're not going to do that, okay? <laughs> so don't sew the dart first, leave it there. I'm gonna sew from here to here. I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna pin in the middle and then I'm gonna pin on the middle of those. But from, from the, other, the side. other side. Yeah. Got it. Exactly. So that makes it lay a little bit flatter, keeps it nice and even. And let's go sew that. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure that I am back stitching at all of these. With, and to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to start in a little, back stitch, go forward. Oh, okay. Because if we're going to start right at the very edge, it will often start to suck it in especially with the long cuddle because the feed dogs will grab that hair and drag it in there. So if I start forward, go backward, it works a lot easier. And you also saw I can like shove that fabric underneath there, make sure that it's catching it like I want it to. So back stitch, clip. Okay, and there we've got the front of our head. So as you're doing this, you can go ahead and you can fluff out the seams as you're going, or you can fluff them all at the end. Okay, that's just kind of a, a matter of personal choice, I guess. And you can see once you fluff it, the seam kind of just disappears. All right, so there's like our- Like magic. Like magic. So we're gonna keep that, it looks a little bit like a toupee or something. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna keep that to the side, and furry, then we're gonna worry about our face. Furry brown butterfly right now. That's right. So. <laughs> All right, so did I mark this? No, I did this right. Okay, so this is going to be the face. So this is the muzzle, this is the chin, 
I see these letters match up. Okay, so that's an easy way for me to tell that these things are going to go. Oh, let me show you one thing. Let's see. That's a bad example. Okay, I'm gonna use it anyway, I'll show you. Um, Cause this is, this is the dart. So this is a seam you're gonna sew. Oh, let me show you a different one. Cause this one is the only, the only one that's marked here. Okay, so here's a pattern. This is something I want you to note is that this seam here, you see the little dotted line. Any of these where they have like a big dotted line here, this is the first seam you sew. So on something like this, it doesn't really matter. You only have one piece, it's one seam. But sometimes if you're confused, that's an important thing to note is what am I sewing first? Okay. That's important. Is that is that written in the pattern someplace? Mm -hmm. She says it's the first is, of the pattern. Great. But you literally have to read all that beginning, like the prelude stuff that yeah, nobody ever wants to read. That? <laughs> right. Nobody ever wants to read it. So I'm telling you every time, guys. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this little dart shut on his nose which is what makes his nose kind of have a little bit of shape there. Oh, wait, I forgot. This is where I need to show you the difference in what I did. Okay, so this is his face. This is his muzzle. This is the little V that is going to be his nose. So I need to reach over you and I'm going to squish here. All right. So this is the little V in his nose. Look how cute that face is, you guys. He's adorable. I like him. I might want to keep him. Sorry, Angie. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty cute. Okay. So I'm gonna um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this. So this is what I figured out I could do. Is I could take this and I could mark my little V middle. And then I could mark my V on here. I put this on here. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this a little smaller so I can tape it on. Because really all I need is this little bit. I'm gonna only show you the nose part of this. I almost forgot that was really close. I had tape. A little wash, little washi tape. Little washi tape. They have special embroidery tape. Do you guys have that stuff too? Oh, I've got that magic pink tape. The magic pink tape. Mm. Yeah, that stuff is good. It is better than old washi tape, which will just tear. Um, okay, good. <laughs> it can show people the right way of doing it. I've had that okay. washi tape for like a decade. I, I really have. I really have. And I just found it the other day, and I was like, oh, I could use that. Lesson learned. What is the uh, what is the tape called? Do you remember? Embroidery perfection tape. Embroidery perfection tape, and it really does hold the um, the water soluble down really well. So I like doing this sort of stuff in other places besides just embroidery, obviously. Okay, so I've got this in place. It's I've marked my V, so I knew where I want that mouth to or the little nose to go. Okay, and now I'm going to take this over to my machine. Somebody asked. So again, this is water soluble stabilizer. Yes. Could, uh, if you don't doing a bunch of embroidery normally, you could maybe use like saran wrap or something like that, or is probably, something you could probably. If you don't have like a big roll of it, yes, you could, and you can mark this with um with a pen. What I have found is that water soluble stabilizer really does help to make the um the stitches lift off of the fabric. So what, when I tried this before and I just tried one stitch, it just ends up like in there. If I do it over the water soluble stabilizer, it stands off the fabric more. Okay. It really does make that makes a difference. Sense. Got it. So I would suggest using it. Um, and if you buy it, um, I have mine somewhere. I keep it once I take it out of here, because when you get it, so this is the stuff that she's got. Um, and this is what I use is the water soluble um, topping is what they call it. So this is from Floriani. I, you have to take it out of here. And then once it gets water in the air, anything like that, it'll start to get weird. So keep it in a Ziploc bag. That's all I do. And I've had it. Pro tip. Yeah. yeah. That particular water soluble, after you stitch it, if you hit it with steam iron, mm -hmm. it pops up. And so if you have stitches that lay on top of each other, it fills them all in. Oh, so interesting. Knock the nap down. 
but it fills in the stitching. Got it. So if you couldn't hear, I don't know if you could hear her, but she was saying that if you if you use this and then you use a steam iron, it'll help kind of puff things up and it'll actually help fill in. It's like, um, Botox, for embroidery. It's like Botox for embroidery, she says. That's <laughs> fabulous. All right. Okay. I've, you know, I've wanted to explore the idea of Botox. This is the way to do it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put my foot down and I'm going to stitch right along that line just so that it will hold it in position. And then I'm going to do a fancier stitch. Oh, you know, no, I have to change my thread. And I just realized, I don't know if my black thread is in here. What row? So I do want to do the first line in my cream thread or my white thread so that it doesn't really show. Okay. Cause that's just a marker for me. So if you want to do this also, and you don't, Oh my goodness. If you don't want to use the water soluble stabilizer because you're rebellious and you don't want to do it, um, you can mark it on the backside, follow that line, then turn it over and put this on. Okay. Uh -huh. So you could also mark the back of your, you think if you didn't want to mark the front of it, does that make sense? It does. That okay. I followed that. Right. Okay. So you could just mark the V on here, stitch that, turn this over, put the water soluble on too, because we know sometimes the water soluble, like the ink will show. Um, Cause I've had that happen. All right, so let me, I don't have black thread. Okay. <laughs> we, don't have, we, don't have, we don't have it spooled up, so. We don't have it spooled up, but I'm gonna show you the stitch, okay? okay? Pretend. I'll show you the finished <laughs> result on the real one in just a second. Okay. So I had to write it over here. I don't know what happened to my black thread because it was living up there for a long time. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. You can blame me. Okay. It was Hawk's fault. He looked at it and it disappeared. I packed it wrong. You packed it wrong. Okay. And there it is. I think that's what it is. I wrote it down somewhere. There it is. 302. Okay. So this is a hem stitch is what it's called on my machine. And it's really just like three little stitches right next to each other. And what I found is this worked really well for making the nose without doing the hand stitching. Because I have a hard time with the hand stitching at the end. I will tell you that. It's not my favorite. So what that does is it repositioned my needle. So make sure you keep uh, that in mind. I was going to change it to the gray real quick. But I realized the gray actually hides in the uh, in this better. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Slash gonna... worse. Yes. <laughs> More. It makes it worse for this. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch. So it does this little funky stitch where it kind of goes back and forth and back and forth. Okay, I'm going to do a pivot. I'm going to go up the other way. Okay, I'm going to lock it. And cut it. Okay, so there we go. You can see how like kind of deep the stitches are. There's a bunch of them. So you could do this if you stitched over it and then stitched over it and stitched over it. But the little hem stitch works really well to just get it done with in one fell swoop. All yeah, right. it's like the machine version of hand stitching. Right, exactly. Easy and peasy. Easy peasy. So then... For those of you who are allergic to hand stitching. Right. Well, because what I find is that it was hard for me to get the nose in the exact right position. After the after it was installed, yes. After the so you can see that yeah. that like sticks in there, looks fine. Let me show you on this guy in the black. Merp. Okay, hello. <laughs> <laughs> when he is that close to the camera, he somehow is extra adorable. adorable. <laughs> <It's magnified. laughs> it really is pretty cute. So that was how I did both the nose, and then I did it for his mouth as well. Okay, and what I did it was I just a skosh past a quarter of an inch so that the seam line is just right along there. And then his mouth. If I move him away, I could see I could see his mouth pretty well. And yep. then I didn't have to hand stitch it. Okay. I did hand stitch. Nope, that's not the one I sewed. This one. So many monkeys. So many monkeys. All monkeys. So five, this one I five. did with the embroidery floss. And with the embroidery floss. Okay. Got so it. you can absolutely, I can even do it both ways. So cute. All right. So that's the different ways of doing it. But if you want to do it by machine, you got to do it now. Uh, you that can, was the key. That makes sense. You, 
order of operations. You, right. As soon as it becomes three dimensional, you're done. Yes. Because the first time I did it, I sewed this seam and then I tried to sew that little V in there and it was very hard to get it right. So I will say, don't do it my way. Do it the right way, which is also my way. <laughs> Your way the second time? Yeah. My way the, one, the time after I figured it out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pin this a couple of times. What I want to make sure is that my little V, once I've sewn that in there, this is where that's at. That points down to the V. I want to make sure that that's on my fold. So when I sew this seam, I'm going to, I'm going to actually get into that V. Okay. So I'm going to sew right down here and I want it to end up, I want to say parallel. Is that the right word? Like straight up from the point okay don't, you know i don't know what on the same line i don't know it's going to look better that way all right so i'm going to do the same thing where i'm going to stick it in just a little bit i'm going to put my foot down we're going to go back over and switch all of this back and then remember i have to move my foot all the way over okay now we can sew so i've got this in i've got it where i want it to be i'm going to back stitch so I kept the pins in there until I don't need them anymore before I'm going to sew over them. Okay. I'm gonna try to keep that parallel to that guy. Oops. Okay. Okay. If what was that? My oops. Yeah, I heard. Oh, it. I, I, I heard stitched. It oops. I stitched way past it. And oh. I meant to stop. So you should just stitch past a little bit, just like one stitch, and then come backward. Okay. See. It still looks cute. See, and there's his little nose in position. So if that were in the black thread, like it were supposed to be, it would look right. Okay. You'll see it in the black thread later when we do the magical switcheroo. Okay. So first stitch here. It's marked. The dart is the first one. Okay. Now I'm going to sew this together. And I'm going to sew. Or I'm going to pin the ends the ends the middle just like always okay. i just saw the comment from vicky hi vicky <laughs> thanks for coming all the way from scotland i love seeing that come up it's super fun you are it's, and she's been making like, stuffies for like a old, while you're too. like an old friend i know we're like old friends if i go to scotland ever someday when we take <laughs> so together tuesday on its international tour do you, do you think the RV will fit on your on your roads? <laughs> we'll we might it. have to get a different vehicle when we're there. I think driving on the other side of the road would be really difficult. I'll learn. You'll learn. <laughs> we'll manage. Okay. That sounds horrible. When they get I'll pontoons, try. pontoons is that what you call it for the vehicle? Yes. We'll stick it and we'll just boat it over there. Okay. So again, I'm not putting my pins in very far. And I'm going to do it kind of um, from either side. So if it's, I can pin it from this side and it's not a big deal, but if it's difficult for you, just flip it over because this is what happens. Do you see how this curves down? So if every pin I have makes that curve, that's where I end up getting it like um, a little pleat in there. It'll start to do dumb things. So if I pin it this way, And it sort of evens that out. Does that make sense? So if every part of these pulled down, pretty soon that's where you get the weird bits. So I kind of even it out by doing the pinning this way. All right. But I do suggest that you really keep the pins out. Don't put them deep into it. Sometimes when we're in classes, I see people and they'll pin like clear like this. But if I shove all of these pins down, it ends up making this really stable. And what I want is this to have more flexibility and movement for me. Okay. Did that make sense? That did. Okay. That did have pushing the one all the way in actually uh, it helped. causes more problems than it helps. So you just showing it us what it did helped. Okay. That's what I want. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go over here and sew this. So I'm gonna put my foot down again. Take my pin out, and I'm just gonna sew right along here. Now, if your stitches are um tiny then you should up your stitch length but if you are making this for a little i would suggest you start at a three or maybe a 2.5 millimeter stitch length which is tiny but it will also help it so that when you are um, stuffing it that it doesn't have any issues but mostly when your child or grandchild is beating the crud out of it mm -hmm. it doesn't pop open 
me. Because most kids are rough on their toys. And the polyester thread, because the polyester that thread is also a must. Yeah. So in and yeah, and if you're use if you're giving it to somebody who you know is going to be extra rough with it, you can always do double stitches. Like I do that on the arms all the time. That sort of thing that you can kind of think ahead and figure out where you might need to do things. It's all now. Okay, so is right now where you would do then you would add in the color stitching line, the black stitching line. Uh, no, if I were doing the mouth, I would actually do that before I sewed this line. Uh, you could do it after that, but then you're sewing this way, which is harder to sew it in that curve. Got it. That makes sense? Yes. Yep. So the black line is actually a pretty easy one to do afterward. And truthfully, if I were going to do it again for the fifth monkey, for five little monkeys, then I would do my black stitching here and I would use the embroidery floss here because I like the look of the embroidery floss there. Um, but, you know, it's a kind of, yeah, you get to decide what you like. So that's what that's what I decided I liked. Okay, so now here is the other little place that I kind of messed with the pattern. All right, shocking, I know. People are like, what, you changed it? So this is the way that the eyes work. And the way that she has you do it, sorry, in the pattern is that you cut out two of these and you're going to sew them together, which I did here. Okay. And then you're going to turn this inside out and it becomes the eyes and then you top stitch this down or hand stitch it. So here we go. I'm grabbing monkeys again. Okay. So that's the way this one is done. Okay. Oh, sorry. So go. this is this piece like this that's been sewn on here and then stitched down and she just top stitched it around here. Okay. But this is the two layers of cuddle. All right. So let me show you. It's almost like a big ear. Yeah, it's kind of like a big ear that's then top stitched down. Okay. So then what I did with the other one is I just trimmed it and stitched it down. One layer. Yep, just one layer. So oh. that's what we're going to do today. Okay, is I'm going to show you how I did that cuz I liked this better. I thought that I could do it with a piece of uh, cotton lawn, because I do love my cotton lawn. Nice and thin. Okay, I can turn it like this. I could stick that in and top stitch this down. So if you really want a finished edge on here, you could do it that way. But what the thing is, is that this gets so thick with the okay. two layers of cuddle. This and it really choice, doesn't need to right? be there. So there are three ways that you could do it. You could do it with the two layers of cuddle, a layer of thin cotton, this is cotton lawn, or you could do it the way I'm gonna do it now, which is to just trim off your quarter inch seam allowance. So you could truthfully, and maybe should, <laughs> measure that, but I'm just gonna chop it off at what I think is about a quarter of an inch. Yeah because it doesn't really matter too much and it only has to sort of match over here. So I'm gonna live life on the edge right here for a sec. Okay, okay? so there's my, my seam allowance all gone. Look at that. People are like, it's so messy. Yeah, terrible. Um. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. I mean, this, right. is, this is not a throw. This is not a throw. We are not, not cutting. That's yeah. not Lux either. It's so, not. You know. It's not. Sometimes it is really messy, but that one right there was not messy at all. Okay. So what I'm going to do is here's my middle. And this is, we will talk a little bit about eyes here, is that this is where it got a little bit um, uh, off for me, I guess. So I want to make sure that that's actually in my middle. So I'm folding this in half and I'm going to stick my pin right here. And if I want something to hold because I'm marking it, I'm going to pin it under twice. So I kind of go in, out, in, out. All right. And that way my pin's not going to really move on me. And then I want to make sure that it is right on this seam on my dart. So if I have my pin in there, it's really easy to line that up with my dart. So I kind of just lay the, lay the pin in there in the little groove, pinch it real hard and repin it. Okay, and then I'm going to pin a couple more times. I throw some pins at Hawk. Sorry. Okay. Don't make me throw them back. Don't do it, please don't. I will <laughs> and then I have little marks in here. So on the um, on the pattern piece, 
we have these little marks here. So sometimes the marks, you don't really understand what they're doing until later. So this mark here is where I'm lining that up. So that's my little mark by the D that I didn't mark as D. I just left a little mark. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that. Now this curves just a little bit. So you can see this wants to go out and I really have to kind of bring it down to go into the right place. So what I found is that if I pin this and then I pull that down, it worked a little better. That's pretty much the opposite of the way you usually do things, right? Because you of usually opposite. pin the ends and then mm -hmm. pin the middle. In that case, right. you kind of worked your way from and the center And this one, I out. do, uh, yeah, I do the middle and then I do out. And then okay. just make sure that it matches here. And that's just because one side is totally straight and one side curves. And it, I found it easier. And that's why it's going to, that's what's going to make it three-dimensional. Yes. You're, you're attaching a straight line to, to a, a curve. curve line. Exactly. Got it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this one in position. And this one, I thought at first that I might be basting this in place, but... You're really not. I mean, you do sew it later, but make sure that you're actually sewing it. Okay, and as I sew this, because it's going around a curve, I kind of have to not stretch it, but kind of keep it nice and taut to keep it flat. As I'm coming around here, make sure that I'm not going to get any puckers and I'm not sewing over any of my pins. Okay, get to the end. Do a little cut. Okay, hey. so there is a face. See, it's getting there. I love that she always says you make the faces first because the face part is the one that you fall in love with. And you're like, oh. you're never like, oh my gosh, that hand is so cute. But the face, the face will get you every time. And, and that'll get you to the end. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's why they make babies so cute too. Okay, so on here, you can see where I stitch my seam allowance, it doesn't match perfectly. So if I put my eyes exactly where those are, they're going to be off. And this is where I found uh, a mess up on, I think it was this guy, that when I did it, um, his eyes weren't anywhere close to even, and it was pretty obvious. So what I did is I actually cut off the safety, um, the little ring that we'll talk about on the back when you stick that on. I cut it off and moved his eye. Um, so I would say don't put his eyes in until the end. Which will work actually because it did work. with with uh cuddle the knit fabric. Yeah. It, it kind did, of it won't unravel where you change the hole from one right, location to the right. other. It's fine. Exactly. So in the pattern, she calls for putting the eyes in now, and I'm not going to. I'm gonna put them in at the end so that I can get them to look the way I want them to. Um I just felt like I didn't have control as well as I wanted to. By the time I got to the end, I had to fix it, and that was frustrating okay so i've got the little eye so this is his little eye patch his mouth i'm going to leave this dart open i'm not sewing that shut and i'm going to take this over and sew it to his head so this is these are the this is the i guess the hardest part of this one so this i want to match with so this three layers two layers sorry we're going to match it to this one which is then going to be three layers. And I'm going to match all of these seam allowances together. So this is where I think, we talked about where it went awry for me when I got the eyes wrong. And I think this is where, because if it moves at all, then your seam allowances aren't perfectly aligned. So I want to make sure that this is right before I stick eyeballs in. That's all. So this one, I'm going to do that thing where I mark the end. Yeah, the end. he looked a little cross-eyed the first time. He did. He was a little cross-eyed. It was... It's not great. <laughs> okay. So this is the only part that when you're doing it at 100%, it's not as easy. I will say that I have learned if you do this, and this is because you're doing, you're sewing this little circle here. If this is difficult for you, the easiest way to do it is to hand base this together, then take it to your machine and sew it around. All right. So for me, I'll just pin this whole thing and we'll sew it. But if it's difficult for you, don't be afraid to use some hand sewing and just do big basting stitches. Okay. I'm going to try to get this to come around and fit in here. So you can see it seems like it's not the right size, but we're just going to twist and pull and do all those things. You're the boss. To make it, I'm the boss. I'm going to tell <laughs> it what to do. Okay, and it's going to behave, unlike children. What's a have? <laughs> mm, sorry, mom. 
<laughs> yeah, there, there's a story in there. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I've got this little area. And then I'm going to go ahead and pin the next little area. So I'm going to kind of stretch it, make it fit, figure it out. And just work my way in. And the same thing that I was saying before, that we're going to not put the pins in very far. So I'm really not putting the pins in a lot. It's going to kind of look a little messy, but it'll work. If you get it to this point, you could go ahead and hand stitch it and then take it to your machine and stitch around. All right. So what I found too is that there's always a way that if I twist it this way, so look at this, then it will lay flat. So I popped it out this direction and then I can get it to work a little bit better. Oops. Okay, and again, you're gonna pin every, I don't know, inch, inch and a half or so, and then go in and pin in between. So if you get to an area where it's too small, then you can kind of move the other ones and make them work. And I don't have to be terribly precise. So I am gonna show you this though. That little flap that we just sewed is over here. Okay. Got it. That confused me. Make sure me. that that is tucked in before you start pinning. Yeah, it confused me the first time when I was trying to do it. And I was like, what am I doing there? And then I realized I'm sewing that whole seam all the way around with a little eye patch in there because you're going to top stitch that later. Okay, so I've got that pinned. Just a couple of pins, just a few, 100. All right, so we're going to go back and sew this. I found that it was easier. Most of the time when I sew hooves, they're kind of done the same way. And I will usually sew them like this. But because this isn't actually a circle down here, I found it easier when I sewed it this way. All right, so not this direction. You could try it this way, but I actually had to take some out when I redid it that way. So I did try because I thought maybe, maybe that'll be easier. So this was the hard part, is that we're gonna do this. We're gonna lay this down and get this underneath the foot. All right, I'm gonna stick it in there, take my pin out. We're on didn't a straight wanna, stitch. Yeah, it didn't wanna sew for a second, I wasn't sure why. Okay, where is my stiletto, there we go. Okay, so I wanna make sure and keep this nice and flat as I'm going through here. Hey, Crystal. Okay. That was nice of you to say. Nice to see you back. I'm going to come back over <clears> here <throat> me. and bring that back. So I want to get this nice and flat as I'm going. So these pins, that is the one thing that if you did this and then you hand stitched it, it would be easier in that you wouldn't have to fight the pins. So, you know, I just fight the pins, but you don't have to. But it's going to keep moving things. My pins out before we run it over them. All right, and this is stitching over the part. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a seam here and I'm stitching over that seam. So I wanna make sure when I'm done that I've caught it, that that seam is actually uh, gonna be inside and it's not on the outside showing. I'll show you again in just a second. Okay, and this part is a little bit thicker because we've got the the seam allowances and then those, there's three layers at one point. The rest of this is just two. Okay, take the pins out. You're basically like plowing through a pin cushion. At yes, this point. yeah, it really is. <laughs> <It's> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna lot. make sure that my fabric is out here. I feel like something I'm turning. There we go, yeah. So just want to take my time, make sure it's it's getting sewn halfway right. We'll see. I may have to fix that. I'm not gonna. I feel like something got, got twisted right there. Yeah, it did. See that? It curled down. So I'm gonna go back over this, and I'm just gonna stitch this little end part, recatch that, make sure everything is nice and flat. So yeah, trust your gut when it starts to behave weirdly. You're usually right. Okay, so I'm just going to backstitch here, go to the end, because I didn't backstitch that at all. Catch that. Make it nice and even. 
Okay. So even with the white thread, you really can't see it. It just kind of hides in there. And that's on the backside anyway. Like once you turn it right. over and you're like, you're looking at for the, the seams in the lux. You can't yeah, see it. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. So what I want to do is make sure that that little stitching line when we sewed these two pieces together is hidden now. So that seems to be not showing. I think I caught that. That's going to come up here. So that becomes the face. Nice. All right. So then we're just going to stitch this baby down. So if you wanted, see, this was the other part that I, I forgot. So when you're doing the face, you kind of need to know where this center middle is up here. Because that has to go into the seam allowance. Mm. So if you just saw what I did, I just fold it in half, found the middle of it. It was a bad fold in half. There we go. Fold it in half, find the middle of it. That middle, I'm going to plunk down into the seam allowance. Okay. And because this is all curvy weird, I have to kind of hold things funky. All right. So then at this point, you can hand stitch this down or you can machine stitch it. And we'll put the eyes in through both layers? Through both now? layers. Okay. Yeah. And I wouldn't do them until... Mary was so later. excited that you only had to put the eyes through one layer and now here you are. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> well, you, but, but, but you not could, three. <laughs> but not three. You could absolutely do it. I mean, it was a little harder because I had to stab through and then I had to clip through both layers. But having messed up the eyes once, I was like, yeah, I don't really want to do that again. So I'm going to do it this way. Okay. Now I'm going to stick this under here. You can... Do this a couple of ways. Let me see. I think this is the one. See, I can't even tell. I did a buttonhole stitch on one. That might be it. Oh, no, this is it. So this is it. Where I, A blanket stitch. Where it stitches down and then over and down and over. And I don't think it made any difference. Uh, Got it. <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily spend all can't that time. See the stitches. You cannot. And like <laughs> honestly, I don't I don't think I would I care enough. So this is one that you could um you could do a straight stitch. I'm actually gonna switch this and do a little zigzag. Oh. How weird is that, huh? We're gonna switch it up. Okay, so I'm gonna do do a two. Because what I want to do, what I'm trying to do with this one is to catch it all the way around. And I'm not necessarily wanting a big zigzag. What I have found, okay, what I have found is that when I'm doing a bigger zigzag on a curve, it's harder. So I want a smaller curve, smaller zigzag for the curve. Okay, so I'm just going to follow that edge right around. And I'm just going to top stitch this down. So you could use a straight stitch. You could stitch this down by hand and do kind of a little whip stitch. You could um, do that blanket stitch. There's lots of things that you can do. If you did it with two layers, then you can just do a, a ladder stitch, basically, and hold it in place. Okay, lock it again. And clip that. Okay. Nice. And then you, <clears throat> excuse me, then you can fluff that. Yep. And then he'll have a little face. Ta-da. Okay. All right. All right. Whew. It worked. Eyes. All right. So now, uh, now well, I guess we could put his eyeballs in, huh? You're like, yeah, do the eyes. Eyes, Teresa. Do the um, eyes. That's not, I'm not, that's not my show. I'm not leading this parade. I, I just got ahead. It. It's okay. <laughs> now we can show you how to do that because I didn't do it with the other one. So what I found is that it's sometimes a little hard to get it through evenly. Yep. See, when I push it through, I do like that quilter's trick, and then it still moves on me. All right. Did it again. Okay. There we go. Because what I want to do is stick a little pin right here, and then I'm going to stick a little pin right here. And then we're going to look at it. And if I put the eyeballs there, right here, I think that would work. All right. 
Thanks. I, I followed what you did. I, and it does seem to have worked. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's surprising, isn't it? No, I just don't. I just trying to, I'm just trying to imagine myself doing what you just did and it's still not working. <laughs> well, because I've lost, I've lost where the eyes should go. And it also, yeah, it's it. more in, uh, it's more important to where it actually is than where it is on the pattern. So this is a part where you're like, okay, so I could take my, my eyes should be, so they might need to be a little further apart is what they want here. So I'm going to move it over just a tiny, and over just a tiny. That's the technical terms for it. Yeah. Okay. So then I that just want to lie. Getting having the reference of getting to see how that what you did related to the eyes on the pattern was a big help. Yeah. So Thanks. the other thing that I realized is that I kind of need to um do you see my the little yellow ruler? Mm. Here it is. So what I kind of want to do is make sure that I've got the same distance. And this one I might actually measure. So if I do three quarters of an inch, that's what that is. And then a quarter of an inch above, I'm going to be brave and foolhardy and mark the front of my cuddle with a... Oh, dear. I know. It's crazy sauce. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I do things that even I question. Okay. And then right there. They're equidistant. Sorry. Didn't mean to hit you there. You're fine. You, you bought me all the time. It's That's not a true. problem. I don't notice. Okay, so now I'm just going to clip through here. Right through the front. Right through the front. Everybody, well, that's nobody, where I can nobody, see it. Nobody look. Okay, the thing is, you're going you're gonna to hit your fingers back here. So make sure that you're not, you know, cutting your fingers back. Sure. Here. That seems like good advice. Yeah, be careful, because I can feel it. it's sharp and it's, you know, so much monkey. The monkey business is what's happening here. It's all the monkey business. Okay, so here's a little eyeball. Let's talk about how you put these in. So, okay, so these are actual safety eyes. These are safety eyes. Okay. Okay. These are, um, these are from the same, but this one, this one is a little bit rounder and I got a different brand this time and I can't tell you what the brand was. It was something stupid. Um, and it <laughs> is, um, <laughs> not telling you, but don't get any that are round on the back here. That would be okay. really hard to tell from the packaging. It, no, it's totally not. Well, I, mean, I can see it. I mean, if you were ordering them online. Right. So don't order them online. Get them from That's a right. local craft store. Yep. Up. Okay. So there, I've still got, it's like a little, it's like a surgeon's thing, you know, where it's like still clipped in there. Oh yeah. The hemostat. Like, yeah. It's like, you know, quell the bleeding that's happening. Great. Just kidding. What? Just kidding. There's no blood. Right. <laughs> so I'm just going to take this. Not yet. I feel like we're on mash all of a sudden. We're, we're, meat, meatball surgery. <laughs> we're early in the show still. Okay. So I'm going to just shove this through. So this is why I don't like this little round one. Because the the pointy ones that I had, they, would they just push actually right through. just push right through. Got it. It's such a subtle difference uh, there in we the go. product for a big result. Yeah. So Got get the, the pointier ones are better. One, they will stab your fingers more. But the actual, like getting it through, it will kind of work more like a like a screw almost. You can kind of push it and it'll push through much, much okay. better. So than you do, that way you don't have to clip quite so many exactly threads, even though there's no fraying. Right. That, and it's, and it'll, you can see it fits really like nice and tight around there. So you don't actually want to cut a hole that it will fit into. You want to clip a tiny hole that you can shove it through. All right. Cause you can see that's really nice and tight. So when I had to fix it before, this is the part that I cut and I just stuck my scissors under there and cut the side and popped it right off. All right. So that worked. But other than that, you're you're not getting that little that little cap. Once you get it on, there. you're cutting it off. Yeah. yeah. So you're just gonna stick it on there. It's a one way only. Push it down, make sure that it clicks all the way. So the important part is that when you're putting this together, this is like a little hat. We talked about it before. If you're anywhere near my age, it's a little Devo hat. Okay. <laughs> and you're just gonna stick it on there and shove it down. <laughs> all right. So you got that. So a little hat goes on, pink. So if you can remember, this is just the brim, and it's going to come down. All right? So then we're going to stick an eyeball in, and there we go. That's good. All right? I think it looks fine. I think well, you'll be a one-eyed guy. Yeah, I he's like done. It. Perfect. Okay. Is it really too fi He's right. He's a, he's a pirate monkey. Okay? So you're going to do that with both eyeballs. <laughs> All right? And then look. It's going to look like this, like magic. All right? Poof. Beef. A magic. All right, great.
I'll just throw that on the ground, right? Okay, oh. so there his nose is done, and I did his mouth. Okay, so now we're going to sew ears in. So I've got one ear done. So we're going to sew the other one in. So I've got the ear. And what I want to do is make sure that it's basically in the same place. So what I found is if I measured up from the bottom, that was a more accurate measurement than from the top of the um, dart. So this one happens to be an inch, I think is what that ruler is. Yeah. So it's an inch from the bottom. So over that's here. It, but that's only at 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but you just want them to be the same. Sure. That's the biggest part here is because if they're not the same, you will be able to tell and it will look really weird. Look it's one of those goofy like me. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of like the eyeballs is when they weren't in the right position, it was very obvious. And even though it was just like an eighth of an inch off, it was very obvious. So I want the ears to be like this. So the back of the ear is gonna go against the back of the head, and the front of the ear is gonna go against the front of the head. All right, so I'm gonna pin this in here and I want the bottom of my ear to go one inch from the bottom because that's what we figured out on the other side. Do you have, do you remember how many millimeters those safety eyes were? 12 millimeters. Those were 12s. Yep. So I actually have a pack that I bought before that I liked that um, I just used all the 12s that uh, were nice and sharp. Yeah, it was a multi-pack. Got it. So, and, but I feel like honestly, the 12 millimeters are the, um, the best ones there was, um, I don't remember the name of the company you asked me earlier and I was going to look it up. Um, so if anybody has, I think there's craft eyes online is the one that Rena uses. And, um, and I think that what was the shop in Billings? They sold craft eyes too. So there are a few places that do sell them. So can, um, can we see the buttons that come with the pattern? That were that you can order from here because yes. I actually I mean even though they aren't safety eyes they are actually super cute they're actually. super cute they're tiny which I like because in the pattern her eyeballs yeah, great, are tiny look colors. at how little they are oh yeah there we go those okay so I think they're super those. cute okay so then this is and these are the little brown eyes these look like safety eyes no they're not they're shanks okay. yeah these are twelve meter millimeter all right. There. So mine might actually be bigger because I think mine are bigger than 12 millimeters. Yeah, mine are definitely bigger. 12 millimeters is what you want. Okay. Okay. I just used the ones I had. That'll do me in. Like you have an entire sewing store in the RV. It kind of looks kind like of, I do. Kind of maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't have the variety I would like to have. Okay. So we've got his ear pinned in. Looks like it's, it's fairly even. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so I'm actually going to sew. I want to sew from the edge to the dart. And again, starting in. Oh, guess what? I'm on the Zigzag. Wrong okay, straight. Come on. We're going to get this back up to three and a half. There we go. Take my needle up, put my needle back down in the right position. And my back stitch. Get those pins out before I run over them. Okay, so this would be a place that if I had, um, if I were giving this to a little kid, I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to stitch this down again. Okay, because they're going to pull that ear. You know they're going to hang on to that ear and fling that monkey around all over the place. Okay, so do I have children? Yes. Uh, so you want to make sure that those ears are nice and firm in there his face all stretched out like that it's, <laughs> that's pretty adorable <laughs> his face is pretty weird like that all right so now we got his face oh so we didn't oh, my goodness okay i gotta sew his arm together too let's sew his arm together sorry guys you're gonna settle in for the long haul yeah we're already an hour and 26 minutes I in know. I knew we were going to be at there, least an hour no, and a half. There are no breaks. Okay. <laughs> no break. Go, go quick. I'm just pinning right now. It's fine. Okay. So we got his head together. He's now marathon. we need to get his other pieces He's together. He's a marathon monkey. Yes. I'm just going to start throwing stuff off the table. All right. So now I'm going to go sew his hand to his arm. Okay. So I'm matching the dots. This we learned, if you have done the elephant, you've learned the importance of those dots. And we use those to make sure that the hands are going in the right direction. 
So again, I'm going to put a foot, put the foot down, back stitch, go across here. All right, I'm making sure that I'm not stretching it as I'm going. I've seen people do that a little bit to try to make sure that it flattens out as they're going. They kind of pull it. Make sure that you don't do that because some of this is definitely cut on the, um, the stretchy side. All right, so there is my hand. Like a cooking show, bam, the other hand is already done. Okay. I have somebody behind me just sewing away. Just kidding. It was you. <laughs> it was <morning>. me. <laughs> It was me two days ago, but okay. you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin these together. And I want to make sure that I have left the space that I'm gonna use to stuff it open. Okay, so I've stitched it there, and that's my little stay stitching that'll help me when I'm gonna do my uh, ladder stitch at the end. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin this. And what I really think that this helps me too to figure out where I'm going to stop sewing, because if you're like me, you've accidentally sewn your um, turning gap closed. And this really helps me to not actually do that. Okay, so around his hand, there are a couple places that I want to make sure, let's see my pen, stay even. This would be one. Okay, so the little crook of his hand. Needs to stay even, so I'm going to pin it first. Gotcha. And the wrists where these come together, those need to match. Okay, so I'm going to pin those first, and then I'm going to go and pin in between. We're going to do the same thing where we're going to pin kind of apart and then pin in between and get it all nice and secure. Okay. And actually, I'm going to pin here and pin in between those. Because the curves, I kind of use the, the pins when I'm sewing it to kind of guide it. Like little steering. Yeah, a little bit of steering wheels. So it's just air steering handles. It's kind of like a thing on a sailboat or something. Or, you know, a ruckus. A little ruckus. My little scoop. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to pin in between. In between. The curves are definitely more important to get the pins in there a bunch. Okay, so here is going to be a little bit too. So when you're doing this thumb, when we get over there, you're just going to need to take your time around it because it's such a such a big uh, curve there, like a tight curve, I guess is what it is. That you're going to need to take your time and make sure that you go nice and slow around it. If you don't get it right the first time, just go over and smooth it out because that often happens to me on the the tight little tight little turns. And on the stuffed animals, there's a lot of those where there'll be like a tiny little thing that the tusks on the elephant are that way. And you just have to make it work. So on places like this where it seems like it's not actually gonna work, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna force it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring these two together. And I'm not gonna worry if these aren't laying perfectly flat together, I'm just gonna make them match. Because in the end, this is gonna be a 3D object. So it's never gonna lay flat and match again. But I do want my edges to match. And that happens because when you saw when we're tracing, so like this pattern here, so my tracing line is here and I cut it just on the outside of that tracing line. Okay, but here I can't see my tracing line at all because I cut it off. So it can kind of grow and vary like by a 16th of an inch or so, no big deal. Um, and that's why that will happen. Okay. All right. Peter is on from, you know, down the street. Hey, Peter. That's our, that's our friend who lives uh, friend who lives in town. He just drove by earlier and, and waved at the bus. Anyway, he yeah. popped on. He's saying hi. Hi. We'll see you tomorrow. We're going to have lunch with it. Yeah, dinner with, with <laughs> yeah. you guys tomorrow night. All right. So I did a little, the little. Um, we love getting bracket. to travel around the country and see folks. It's great. It is. It's this wonderful. Is one of our the favorite parts. So I sewed right along here. Do a little back stitch, turn, do a little back stitch. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And I'm going to get that unstuck. I'm gonna shove this underneath here. And I want to start sewing. Basically, so I'm going to come down on that stay stitching line that I did. So I can put my needle down and be like, okay, yeah, that worked. I'm going to go forward. Come back. Stop there. Do a little pivot. In, back. And I'm just going to follow around here. Okay, so I'm going to get up here. Technically, I want both sides open. I find it really hard to make sure that happens, so I just make sure one side is open. 
right. and then I pivot a little bit so I can give him a little crisper wrist instead of kind of swaying around that corner. I pivot it. That's right. a nice tip, actually. Uh, that that right there that that went by really fast, but um, yeah, basically to, to drop the needle in the corner of the wrist right where the fabric changed color. Yep, and we're gonna do it again here at the thumb. Okay. So. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Magnetic. It has stiletto. magnetized. Okay. So I'm going to come down here. And you remember I stuck that this this pin came down in his his thumb right here. And I made it come in this direction. So what I need to do is come down basically to the pin. And then I'm going to pivot again. Okay. So I'm going to do one more stitch. And I'm going to go backward a couple because I'm gonna trim that, I'm gonna clip into that. So I wanna make sure that it's nice and strong. And then I pivot. So instead of don't try to curve around his hand, I don't know where the pattern is, but you don't wanna curve this. You wanna actually stop, pivot and come around. And that's what will give him that nice little um, thumb. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch really nice and slow. So this is the part that I was saying, if you come around this and it ends up being a little bit, you know, hard corner and we're just going to go back over and smooth it out basically okay, so treat this, this little... like a basting stitch and then right. fix it because it's kind of hard to get it nice and even as long as you're going to the the inside of the, the line mm -hmm. yep fine. you just kind of make the e the lines even out okay so this side we're not pivoting at that it's just a smooth transition Okay, and then I'm gonna check it and make sure. So I felt like I got a little bit close there. So I'm okay. I see his thumb come around. It's a little bit chunky right there, but it's okay. All right, so his thumb, now to make that thumb pop out, if I don't clip this, his thumb is gonna have a little pucker right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I need to get my scissors sharpened again. I use the tips too much and they gone dull. Uh, I really and want to use the those tips. are micro serrated. You can get those sharpened. I can get them sharpened. All so right. I'm going to do this. So then it has this. Okay. So it can move. All right. So in the pattern, she calls for clipping all of this. So this right here, I'm actually going to go back and fix that because I don't like it. Okay, so this is where I get a little bit fidgety sometimes about things. So this is what I mean. If you don't like it, come back in and fix it. I'm just going to make that go rounder. Do a little back stitch, clip my thread. All right, and now I'm gonna go back under here. Wish I had my reading glasses and pop some of these stitches out here. Okay, and what that does is it'll make that all nice and round again. Okay, so like it was supposed to be. All right, yep. so I just took that little chunky part out, fixed it. So you could go ahead and trim this if you wanted to, as you might suspect. I don't want to. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop his, his fingers in, use my handy-dandy point turner, and <laughs> roll that out. It actually works really well because then, look, you just shove it down his thumb. Nice. Okay, and there's a little hand. Look at how cute it is. Okay, so in the pattern instructions, she's going to tell you to make the hands and then stuff them and sew the end shut. Instead, I left a little turning hole here. Okay, so we're not going to stuff them because what we found is that it was harder to sew when we stuffed it. All right, so there we got. We've harder got to a, sew the body, right? Harder to sew the body when it was stuffed. Got it. Okay, so we're going to make two arms. We're going to pretend. Yeah, because the other one's already sewn in. So we have it. Two arms, a face, and now we're going to do the legs. All right. And the legs are a little bit funky, surprisingly. I'm going to throw pins over. You ready? Okay. Super classy, but it works. Okay. I only have so many pins. Okay. So again, we're going to do the same thing where we want the top and the bottom to match. And I want this curve to match. So I'm going to hold those nice and even. 
And I have found that if I, especially with this one, if I lay this down and kind of pin some of these areas and then go back in and pick it up, it was a lot easier. So for some reason, it really wanted to move on me. And uh, I'm not sure why the leg did that, but always the leg was a little bit more of a hassle. But I couldn't get the edges to match quite as nicely. So sometimes I don't really have a reason for those things. They just happen. Okay. This is one of the few times where like, I haven't really seen you spend as much time considering the nap direction. Is that, or, or, or oh, that you, I haven't yeah. considered? No, but, 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 because I cut it out. Right. Like with all of it, I traced all of the patterns, made sure that the nap was going the right direction and then just followed the um, directions on the pattern that oh, tells okay. me which way the nap is supposed to go. Got it. Yeah. So after that, I don't have to care. That was me not being here for that part, but you actually did care. I did, did care that at that point. Okay. Yeah. But it was yeah, way earlier when I cut it all out, when I traced it. So again, we're doing a little curve around his ankle. Come down here, do a little back stitch, clip it. All right. So now we've got this part of his leg. Okay. So my first thing that I would think I had to do was to sew this side too, but it's actually not what we want to do. We want to sew the toe on first. So this part here, so this is your M, is gonna match with your M. So again, this one doesn't have a lot of markings, but that M is really important because that's your middle of the toe here. So we're gonna get those guys to line up and pin it there. And I can feel where that seam allowance is. So I'm gonna make sure that it's basically in place. And then I'm gonna force this to match. Okay. And then I'm just going to pin it in between. Hey, Cindy Wade, I see your question. Next week, Teresa and I are going to do an Ask Me Anything episode. Uh -huh. And I will absolutely answer that question with some depth. It's a great question. Come back next week. <laughs> <You're> gonna, <tuned. laughs> I'm going to bait you. You're going to come <laughs> and, and, and watch us answer all the silly questions and all the great questions. Yes. We yeah, we'll talk about that more at the end, but yes, we're definitely doing that. Okay, so I've got this pinned in there. It's a little bit more on this side, so I feel it, like there's like a little gathering that happens. Totally fine. Okay, that's the way it is. It's what gives it shape. It's the, kind of the weird thing about sewing 3D stuff is you get these flats and fluffies that have to sew together. So again, we're in a back stitch. Go across. backstitch okay now I've got toes okay so now we can start seeing the foot kind of come together it looks a little bit more like a boot now all right then so I'm going to come back and like, sew this like edge a spat. like a spat mm -hmm. if he was a fancy 1920s bear is that what 20s sure, like oh roaring, the roaring. other 20s because we're in the 20s again and i the forget roaring, the roaring 20s. the roaring 20s or, or i don't know or what or these 20s are going to be called played in a marching band which is why i know what a spat is <laughs> got it i clearly did not i don't have a lot of marching bands with violins <laughs> not none i did say not none. marching strings that i actually haven't seen that it would be a hard thing to do i think Especially as the cello player. Yes, yes, as the cello player, it would be nearly it, impossible. I'm going to call that a team sport. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to sew a little, come on up here, get up to where my stay stitching line is. I can see very clearly, and you can see these are my little marks that I did on all of those where I needed to sew the stay stitching. Okay, I'm going to come up here, get my pin out, do a little back stitch. Okay, and the stay stitching line that I did on the arm is not marked, just to reiterate that. Like, I just made up that gap and marked it on the pattern myself. So, I would suggest that you do the same. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. Try to get it to match that line a little bit. Monkey is in the way. Sorry, monkey, you gotta move. Okay. All right, and then we're going to sew this. It's a barrel full in here. It really is. By the end of today, when people make monkeys, it's going to be craziness. 
Okay, so there's my <laughs> there's my little turning gap. All right, and now I've got the foot. So now we're gonna sew on the pad of the foot. So if you've done other uh, Funky Friends factory patterns, you kind of know how this works. It's the same thing as any other pattern. Here's my N. So I did find that if I mark these with pins, it's easier to match them. So I'm gonna mark that one, I'm gonna mark this one. And then it's easy for me to put the pins together. And I'm like, oh, that's where it's at. Otherwise, I'm trying to kind of do this thing. I'm trying to look and look and look and look. And it's not as uh, not as easy. So this one, I'm matching up my seam allowance with that little line back here. And I'm going to pin that. Okay. And then I'm making this whole thing fit in. All right. And that'll give him a little bit of shape to his foot. So again, we're going to do that thing where we pin every inch or inch and a half or so. And then I'm going to go back and fix it if I feel like it's a little off. So once I get up here, it looks like it's working just fine. Sometimes it's easy to kind of pull a little bit. So I always pin infrequently to make sure. Okay, so I'm pinned these a little bit apart and then I'm going to come back from the other side. And pin this side. And every other one. Again, flinging pins over. Okay, it's not like I use a lot of pins. I just the, the thing is that there's over and over boxes again. and boxes of pins in the RV. Well, I have but more right is, there the, too. This is, oh, there, yeah, up there on the circle. Yeah. Right, but it's nice to just kind of reuse the ones. Well, because what happens is if I don't, is I end up with a huge pile at the machine, which then is uncomfortable with a with a uh, magnetized stiletto. Uh, <laughs> Okay. It just catches and catches and catches. So, you yeah. have problems at the beginning or problems at the end. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But the, what's nice about this, this little circle is I can come back over here. And I can just pick them up. So I can't. It's quick cleanup. I think. Do you guys have those, the circles? In all the colors. In all the colors. Yeah. They're great. And I love them because they're so, so magnetic that basically they'll pick up everything. Also, they, they kind of let... Uh, they they push the pins into a into a circle. I don't know. That's why it's called a circle, I guess. Exactly. Anyway, and most of the time, you end up with the heads out. Well, because if you put the heads up, they'll always lend out. So if you put it in there, God. they'll always fall down that way. What happens is there's people like me who are just lazy and throw it at it, and then it just lands wherever it feels like landing. Okay, one more pin. And then we're going to sew all the way around this guy. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Is when I'm putting a foot pad on, I'll always put the foot pad down this way. And sew it around in a circle. Right? Okay, this isn't a circle, but this is flat. Where the other thing we were sewing was two like 3D fabrics that did not work very well. Okay, so I'm going to pick a side because I want to start with the straight and then do the curves. I think it's easier if I start on a straight part. So I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to backstitch here because I'm going to be able to come back around. So I'm trying to get that seam to go in there flat, open. And I'm just going to work my way around the toe. So this is another place if you have a little trouble getting it to be uh, a smooth curve around here, just go back and fix it afterward. Totally fine. Hey, Lisa, we would have started at noon your time. It was one o'clock local time when we started or 10 o'clock Pacific time. And yeah, we're an hour and 45 minutes in marathon, <laughs> folks. Here we go. We'll and, we, and we haven't even gotten to, to the body or the assembly yet. Hush. It's great. Everything's Are fine. people sticking around? Did everybody leave? Are we here alone now? We are not here alone. <laughs> No, I can't see the numbers, so I'm always like, Did anybody Great. stay? Every um, I don't... virtually everybody, <laughs> okay, good. I think it's super cute, it's totally worth it. All right, so there we go. See, now I can use my little circle. So, this is how it works pink. Nice. See, most people won't have a cameraman following them and being in the way of them reaching the sewing machine. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I love you. Um, okay, so we've got his little toe. If you uh, are working, working with cotton, you would need to trim this. With the cuddle, I don't need to, which is great. But I do need to trim this right here. So the same as his thumb, where I need to make that so it's going to curve out. I'm going to do this the dangerous way, where I'm clipping toward the curve just because the ends of my scissors are not working as well as I want them. I'm 
So we want to clip to that curve or clip to the seam, but not through the seam, never through the seam. Because if you do, you just have to re-sew it. All right, so then we're going to turn this guy inside out. All right, and this is where you're going to use your handy tandy pen or a point turner because you have one handy. You push this out, which is ridiculous because I have like three, but they're all in the RV right now. Not leaving till we see a monkey. <laughs> Good. That's what, so that's, that's, what that's what the internet says. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> so this one I can see I have a little bit of clunkiness here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip it and see if that fixes it. Okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can do it where you can do little V's. Okay, I hate so I hate cutting it like this. It's scary. That's why. It's because if you accidentally cut too far, you really have to go back and fix it. If you just use the tips, right? Then yes, yeah, so you want to use the do, tips. You can do one side at a time, basically, one side of the seam at a time. Right. Yeah, and you can, and if I clip it like this, I can't I can't actually clip any further, but it's not clipping as well oh, as I want it to. It. I mean, those scissors have gotten to work out. They really have. It's not the scissors fault. It really isn't. I've just <laughs> used them like crazy. For some reason, they'll get tired too. Okay. Also, look at my seam. Not consistent, and that's okay. All right. So Is don't panic. Soft? Don't panic when your seam is not consistent. That happens all the time. All right. Well, we, what we care about more is getting it fairly smooth. So let's see if that helps. Because the other thing that you can do is just trim that whole seam allowance down to like an eighth of an inch. But that's messier. And I'm trying to avoid the messy. It helps a little bit. Okay. And then the other thing that I can do is come along here. And fluff this all up. Boom, boom. So sometimes when the threads are caught in there, or the fibers are caught in there, it looks a little weirder. All right. That's a little better. It's a cute little foot. All right. So now we've got a leg. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to fold this in half so your seam allowances match. You don't have to be too super careful about this, and we're just going to take this and sew it together. All right, and that's basically because we're giving it a knee that these edges are not going to want to stay together. So this is kind of just a basting stitch. Make sure it stays when we sew it together with the leg or with the body. All right, so that'll make the leg stay where it needs to be because this has more. Do you see? You see what I'm talking about? Like there's more here, so this just holds this together. Got it. Because if we didn't sew that together, the front would want to be up here. Yes. Okay. I yes, I understand that. Okay. That took, so that minute to, to catch up with what you were saying, but yeah, I get it now. Okay. So that so, was that also went by really fast, y'all. So okay. so when you after you've sewn the leg, I it did. turn it, sew it, seam allowances together. So the seam allowances were on the side; they're now front and back, and that's what makes the foot stay forward. Got it, and gives them a knee. Mm -hmm. a gives them a little knee. bit of a knee. And that yeah. only works in this case because we didn't stuff him already. Yes. Because he's cuddle as opposed right. to cotton. Right. And his legs, they weren't asking to stuff yet anyway. So in the pattern, she would tell you to stuff the arms. So the arms would be stuffed at this point and the legs would not. But we didn't really want to do that. I want to leave it all unstuffed until I'm done. So Got it. that's just the way that I'm doing it because it's cuddle and because I want to make it easier for myself. All right, so we've got the arms. Once you have the arms and legs, you're going to sew them into, here we go. You're going to sew your tummy together. Should we do that real fast? Do it. Show you how that works. It doesn't need a lot of pins because it's a pretty small piece and it's just a little curve, just a gentle little curve but not that few of pins, that's too few. So she was like, she's only gonna use three pins. You're wrong, sorry. <laughs> it's gonna be a few more than that, but not a lot. So it's gonna tell you to sew from K to L. That's the first seam on there. Okay, and that first seam thing that she does is actually super helpful. 
in my opinion. Oh, where the, the dotted line on the pattern is the first seam? Yeah, it really helps me figure out, like, okay, this is where I'm starting. Because sometimes the, I don't know, sometimes it's confusing because you're like, what piece is that? It does what? Front leg, back leg, front leg two. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff like that in the pattern. Can we go back to the foot for a second? I'm yes. Um, do we have a question? We do. We still have to sew the lines on the toe lines yes. on the foot. Is that a later question? That is after it is stuffed. Okay. Got because it. if you sew the things on here, there's really no way to stuff behind those or to know how tight to make them. Okay. Okay. Got it. So we've sewn this together. Now we have the tummy. So this is this is a great example. So this is what I was talking about. When you are doing it, you're going to get these parts here where it's caught all the nap in there. And if you just come along with your little stiletto and fluff that up, those seams will go magically away. Okay. Hey, Teresa, this nice long show. Could you do me a favor? Yeah. Could you hold the camera for a second while I go get a battery pack? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Stand by. So we're gonna, we're gonna, our camera's gonna die. So you can see that this, it would just totally hide the seam. Works really well, really well. Okay, all right. So once you've gotten the tummy together, then you got your arms, your legs. We're gonna use one of ours. Legs, this is the front. So the front of the leg goes on here. Oh, look at that. You're gonna sew them together. I'm all what? Like, I gotta, I gotta pinch <laughs> She's it. helping, Angie's helping out. I appreciate it. Okay, and I'm just going to pin these in. Okay, I'm going to let you all look back. Boom. All right, and we're, <laughs> we're done. We're done. All right, and we're back. Thank you. <laughs> Applause. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to pin those in. So front of the leg to the front of the body when we do it right sides together. Okay, look at that. It's like a little leg. It totally is. It's very cute. Look at, check it out. It's <laughs> super cute. Yeah. All right. Now you're going to do the same thing with his arms and you're going to sew the arms in. Very important. It's always important to figure out which way the arms go. The arms go in so that the thumbs point down. And that's because we're going to pin the arms in here. So I'm just going to clip the arms so you can see it. Okay. So the arm goes here. When it comes out, it looks like this. All right. What happens if you pin it the other direction which sort of feels right because it's thumbs up and that's the way I am. It's like when I sit, my thumbs are up, right? So I don't want to put his hands in, his thumb up, same way, right? But when you do that, when it comes out, he's just given a high all the time. <laughs> and if he's got both arms up, it's not cool. Like we just want, maybe you could do, do one and be like, hey. <laughs> and then the other one, like, I don't know. The way I end up seeing, down. like, and see this is he ends up looking a little bit like he's dragging his knuckles. A little bit, but he's super cute. I mean, his little oh, arms. No, it totally works. No, it he's, totally he's, he's very monkey. Very monkey. Okay. So if otherwise his arms would be up like this, both of them, hey, all the time. <laughs> Which looks like he just wants to get picked up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or he's under arrest. Or he's under arrest, which we don't want either. So you're gonna you're gonna pin or yeah, pin them both in, sew them along here, base them in place. Okay, are we ready for the cooking show thing? <clears throat> and magically, it looks like this. <laughs> okay, so this one, I've sewn them in. Okay, just base them in place. You can see I did a really careful job of making a very straight line. <laughs> sarcasm is going. It's, a, it's such a not straight line. Sew them in. Sew this side together. All right. So you're going to sew your back and your front together. Oh, we didn't sew the back together. But let me show you what we did there. We also haven't done a tail. Oh, dang it. Okay. We'll do the tail. So I sewed the back <laughs> together after the tail. Darn it. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to pin this together and then we'll talk tail. Okay. So let me do this. Okay, so I'm going to pin this together. I'm going to pin from either side. And I want to make sure and sandwich these guys in here. So I have markings on either side for a leg and a leg. And I want those to match. If those markings don't match, I'm going to be in trouble because they're not going to work. Okay, and I want to stuck stick all of this stuff inside. Right, so that's kind of the places I want to mark for or pin first. So the top, the joints, I okay, get these in there. 
make sure that my arms and legs are going to be secured when you get that through. So now this one too is kind of cool because if you have sewn this to it first, if you pin and you only pin through part of the arm, you've actually attached these together and I can sew them. You don't have to pin through all four layers here. All right, so I don't, does that make sense? Okay, so like if I pin this, my pin just jumped back to the circle. That was pretty I, funny. I saw that. Um, so I can pin here magic. and I can pin partly through and it's caught because the arm is already attached to it. So don't try to sew the arm, the back, the front all together at the same time. Base them in like this where I sewed the arm in first. I sewed the leg in first, then I'll sew it all together. All right, because what happens otherwise is I have to try to pin through all four layers, which is harder and also doesn't hold as nicely. Okay, so sometimes yeah, people try to tip. skip that step of like, I don't want to baste it in. I'll just sew it all together at one time. I'm like, don't do it. You will be sad. Mostly you'll be frustrated. You won't even be sad. You'll just be angry because it's not working the way that you want it to be. Okay, so now we can go and sew this. Judy, the answer is a barrel full. <laughs> How many monkeys did it did you make to get to that step? <laughs> <laughs> I've made three monkeys so far. I'll probably make more. Okay, so this is a bunch of layers. Remember that. So we got four layers here plus our seam allowances. So that's going to be your part that you're going to kind of stutter over a little bit. So make sure that it's feeding through nicely. Okay, and also the thing about sewing those legs in first is that's one more time that you've stitched it in. So when you have the kid who flings it around by its legs and its arms, it's already attached and not going to fall off, break loose. Because sewing that stuff in again later is just a pain. Nobody wants to do it. Okay, so normally you would sew all the way around this, both arms, both legs. I already did one side. Because I told you it was like a cooking show. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, at I got a little pucker thing. What happened uh -oh. in there? What? What uh, happened? Oh, I don't know. I messed up. It happens. It got, it got, it got pulled. So this is the seam that I just sewed. And my arm seam is over here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that if I can find my blade again. There it is. There it is with the blade out. That's a great idea, Teresa. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's still no blood yet. So that's great. Okay. So I just ripped that seam out is what I'm doing there. I'm just going to repin that because the arm got pulled somehow while I was sewing. So I'm going to make sure that that is actually where I want it to be. And I'm going to come back in and sew that from this side where I can actually see it. Okay, so these things happen. This, and it's gonna happen. So like getting to watch her like get in trouble and get right back out of it again <laughs> is really, you guys are you guys are winning. And that's like, honestly, it's kind of the thing that happens when you've sewn the other pieces, like you have all these pieces together and there's kind of weight on it because the arm is is now heavy and wants to pull this direction. It doesn't want to lay really evenly because it's got oomph going that way. Can you remind us again why you aren't using a walking foot like you usually do? Because I actually, so bring it up. Here we go. So let's talk about the walking foot. So what happens when I use the walking foot is um, the foot is actually so large. So this is the... This is the open toe foot, but it's the same. It's so wide. When I'm trying to do a quarter inch seam allowance, I this isn't a quarter of an inch. So it ends up being that I'm, I just have too much foot to see a quarter of an inch and to cr control a quarter of an inch very well. So I end up fighting the foot, which is not my point. Um, and what I found is that when I'm working with the small things like this on little bitty curves and everything like that, using the regular foot is easier because I'm not trying to feed multiple layers in. So if I'm doing a cuddle strip quilt, honestly, I wouldn't do it ever without a walking foot because I need that help to bring all of those layers through. But when I'm working on something this small and my seams are you know, a little circle or this leg that is six inches long, I can keep it evenly moving but I can control that quarter inch much better. So that's really, that's the difference. Okay. So on stuffies, I found that working with the regular foot works much better. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yep. Okay. So Thanks let me see. The question. There's my, there's the regular foot that I was trying to show you. So when I sew, the furthest I can get over is like here-ish and my quarter inch from here is here. 
So like I can't get the needle over to do the same thing that I'm doing here, which means I'm probably going to do it in the middle and my quarter inch is here, which I can't see a whole lot of the edge when I'm sewing. The control is just really, it's not there. And then what happens is I get really frustrated and nobody wants to see that. <laughs> it's not pretty. So we forgot to talk about the tail. So let's talk about that real There's quick. A, this is a great section though. It's so the this tail part of the project is, is a little funky because it's this curvy shape. So you can absolutely cut them, to, cut them out, sew them together. You're gonna do your little stay stitching thing here. What happens is this, it's like sort of weird because it's cut on bias and it's a knit fabric and it's it's a little harder to get it to behave nicely when I'm trying to sew it. It wants to do weird things. And that it seems wasn't like terrible. a zillion pins. It is a zillion pins. I will tell you, it is a <laughs> zillion. So instead what you can do is you can take your piece. The only thing that you're gonna lack is you can't, you could only do this on one side. I have no idea where the other side is, okay? But you could do your little stay stitching line here, trace it out. This is our cutting line, but we're not gonna cut it. Instead, what we're gonna do is some sewing and using that as my raw edge. Okay, so we've done this before on other things and we use that as our sewing line. This one, we're gonna use it as our raw edge. And I'm just gonna do a little bit, show you. So basically I pin around the outside of it, okay? I'm gonna pin over here too. I try to just pin it so that everything in the middle is kind of controlled. And then we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna line that up against my raw edge or my, yeah, my raw edge, which is my, my black line there. Okay, and this is a lot easier to control. I think this is a game changer right here for, for doing small pieces uh, for stuffies. For crazy curves, it works really well because I just need to keep this flat as I'm sewing. I'm going to push all my pins right off. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Let's go nice and slow around that curve. Okay, and this one has a turning hole as well. I'm gonna ignore it right now because I just, I'm gonna sew the whole thing. I'm not gonna use it in this monkey. Okay, I will show you, you could do this because one of the monkeys doesn't have a stuffed tail, remember that? That's true. It's yeah, and I was like, oh, the tail never got stuck. Okay, so once I've sewn it like this, then I can go ahead and I, if I had my rotary cutter, I would just cut it out and I've got a tail. Okay, that's the easy way to do curves. So that's the way you can do it if that tail is a little bit um, what's intimidating, right? That would be a word I would use for it. Actually, because it is it is a little funky. a bunch of little little curves and you saw how fast I was able that to do was, that. And this is definitely that. like a ton of pins as you come around here. This one you'll need to you'll need to make sure that you clip this so that it will turn really nicely. Clip a couple of these so that they'll turn in nicely and clip around this corner. So here I did actually trim it down just a little bit because it's such a tight little corner. And then I have a tail. Poof. Boom. Just like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so here's my little tail pieces. See, I have all sorts of an, uh, animal parts here. It's pretty weird. Okay. Right. <laughs> so now I've got my little body. Okay. With his little dancing legs. <laughs> those little hands. All right. And then we've got the head. So remember, we did the head earlier. We stuck his ears in. Okay. So we want to put him together. I'm actually going to do this right sides together. If I remember right, I'm going to sew this. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to sew these guys together. So that his face comes together. I want to make sure that these match. Okay. That's actually important because you will see if it doesn't. So let's see if I can get it right. Because I'm only doing this once. All right. So the other thing that I need to do is make sure that I am ending basically straight down from his nose. 
a question. Um, mm-hmm. This is sort of a general sewing with Minky question. Yeah. Uh, general sewing with cuddle question. Mm-hmm. Um, all of a sudden, there's a pop up window in front of it. I can't read it. Give me a minute. There we go. When sewing with Minky, how often should I be taking my machine in to be machine in to be serviced? I frequently open up my machine and take it apart. What I uh apart, I take apart what I can and blow out all the dust that builds up. Mm-hmm. But I I use it every single day. Yep. So I think there's something in there that's interesting, right? It's the blowing it out part. That's right. You shouldn't right? be using well. You shouldn't be using canned air on machines that are newer than maybe 50 years old. Um, so don't use canned air because all it does is blow this stuff into your machine further. And if that's happening, you should probably take it in to the machinist and have them look at it soon um, because we don't want to mess up the machine like that. Otherwise, I take mine in once a year and get it all cleaned up and um, nice. If you remind me, we'll take this part at the end and see how much mess is in there. I think the biggest part, the biggest part really is, um, <laughs> sorry, so close. Sorry. And I'm like, that's a lot of face right there. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> Bad camera. Head, no <laughs> but what you need to do is clean it out all the time. So clean it out weekly, clean it out every time you do a project, whatever your like MO is, don't just leave it. Is that right, Mr. Machine Repair Guy? And always use a vacuum. Use a vacuum. While you're brushing. Got it. So brush it up and then kind of vacuum it out with a little crevice tool or cre- crevice tool. Is that what you said? Crevice tool vacuum, there like a, an attachment that will like suck it out. Because the thing is, is if you stir it up, it's still all in there. Um, so you can vacuum it out. And I know I have a tiny little one that I can use, which works really well. Um, you did a really good Instagram video talking about that about two weeks ago. Oh, see, Got on it. Instagram about two weeks ago, he talked about cleaning your machine. Oh, the oh, thing is five to Five Little please... Monkeys Instagram account. Yes, Got exactly. It. So please clean your machine. That's the thing is don't just leave it. Um, that's the biggest problem people have is that they just don't ever open it up and clean it. It doesn't make it really much worse for me than sewing with cotton. Cotton will leave a mess. Cotton causes fuzz all over everything. You just have to clean it up. But we've talked about it before. When you are doing something like this and you've cut out all of these pieces, throw them in the dryer with a washcloth. Let them tumble around for a little bit. and It'll get off most of that cuddle dust. Then when you're sewing with your machine, there's not a lot that comes off. Okay. So that's really the trick is to get the fabric to not have so much dust falling off before you start sewing. And then it's not really much different. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Good. That was a little segue, but it's fine. Uh, okay. I know we're already we're already into this project. It's fine. We're way into this project. Okay, but we're almost there. So I forgot what I need to do is turn this. So we're gonna have this whole body because we need right sides together. So I'm gonna shove everything in here. It's like those little the popples. Do you remember oh, what they're called? Those. those little toys. You like pop it out. They they fold it into their own marsupial pouch. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So that's what we're going to do. So we got here. So I know that end matches. Here is my chin seam that I just did. So that's going to go on my tummy middle seam because I know that's the center. Right. So I'm going to pin that. And then I'll come around here. And I'm going to pin this end. Then everything in between. And we're going to sew this together. So if you notice, the top of the head is not stitched yet. So we got a big wide opening. It's a little bit funky. Oh, look what happened there. I don't know what happened there, but there, there's no seam. So I'm going to go sew that real quick. Okay. Is I that the I, other side of the L bracket? No, it's the other, um, the other arm leg thing that I didn't sew on screen that I sewed before. Oh. And I must not have backstitched when I sewed it because I was being lazy and it came out. Uh... And I can't really sew the head on if the side isn't, <laughs> isn't solid. Okay. So look at that. I didn't even take any pins out. Just bam. Sew it. Up. Nor did you really add any pins. Did you? Did you see? Nope, nope, no, I didn't nope, pin I didn't see that that was all. That's like it never happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to re- rewind and rewatch later. Yep. But sometimes that happens, you know, things don't, things don't work exactly right. All right. So I'm going to pin all of these edges together. I'm going to try to get my seams to be sort of flat to open up when I'm sewing this. But like I said, I don't worry too much about it. I just give it a shot because it will make it lay a little bit flatter. Okay. Come around here. And now we're going to sew this all the way around. 
right? So this is a little weird. Okay. Okay. But once we pop this out, it will actually kind of look like a monkey, which is great. This isn't even roadkill. I don't even know what this is. This is popple stage. Like, <laughs> it's very odd. It's a marsupial sort of thing again. Stiletto. There we go. Okay. I want the stiletto because once I take these pins out, it's going to want to move because I've got so many weird layer things happening here. So I'm going to use my stiletto to kind of control it. Okay, and then I'm going to check these seams too when I'm done and make sure that I've caught everything. Because again, this is one of those seams that's going to get a bit of stress from a kid. So if it's, if it's pulling, I can kind of get under there with the stiletto and make sure that it is where I want it to. Here's his little ear and make sure not to catch his ear in there. Okay. Get that under there. Burp. Backstitch. So if I were sewing this for a little one, I'd probably go over that again. Make sure we caught everything. It looks like it. Okay, there's a little short area. I'm going to go right over this because you can see right here I got real close to the edge. So I'm just going to get that area, make sure that it's it's caught. Because honestly, fixing any of this stuff now is way easier than later. Okay. All right. Okay, here it comes. You ready? There's a little face. <laughs> it's pretty cute. So now That's the back cute. of his head is all open. So we got to fix that. All right. I just like to see him come together first. All right. So we're going to sew here to here, and then we're going to sew the top of his head shut. And he has another little dart up there. And that's what gives his head some shape. So remember that when you've done those marks, if you mark the letters, don't just make the marks because she's going to tell you. So from this letter to that letter, it's not going to make any sense unless you've got some, some markings on there. So now I'm going to press this open and we're going to sew across the top of his head. I'm just losing all the pins down there. Is that what's here. going on down there? Mm -hmm. Okay. There must be some on the edge of the table that I'm shoving off. Yeah. Also, on accident. you're barefoot again. So Just one barefoot. Okay. Careful. And it's on the sewing pedal, so we're fine. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to sew across his, sew across his head and give him a little shape. Get that to stay fairly open. And I would bet that if you made a bigger dart, you could get his head to be flatter and all sorts of things. Okay? That makes his head a little rounder. It's pretty cute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now we have one more seam that we're going to do. Because now I could do it where I just like had to, I could stuff it in and sew it shut. But honestly, I don't want us to have to sew that by hand, that little part. That looks awful. So we're going to sew that part. But we want to keep that open because it does make all of this easier when we're sewing around that circle and that sort of stuff to have more room for um, sewing everything. Otherwise, you have to do that with all the legs and the arms and stuff kind of all like, you know. Right. Like when in, you're trying to sew that next way. seam, when you're trying to sew the next seam to have more of it open, it works a lot better. Okay. So again, we're going to come from where I stitched up here down the back to where the turning hole is. And I know where that turning hole is because I did the stay stitching. And so we do a little back stitch. I probably should have pinned another pin in there. Pin it, pin as she says. Yeah, not <laughs> as she does. Fall on here, get down, make it kind of match up with that and do a little back stitch. So that's going to get some pressure because that's where I'm going to stuff him. It's not what I meant to do. You, oh, you just cut the thread? I cut the thread, yeah. So I'm going to do a little lock stitch. And then I'm going to turn. 
because that was supposed to be a foot lift and not a thread cut. And you sewed off the side the little L bracket trick again, like that's right. the reinforcement. Exactly. So on either side of this, so this is my stay stitching line, just on one single layer each. Okay. This is where I've obviously sewn those two together. And then I've done this little L bracket here and back stitched on both of those to make it nice and strong. So what that does is it gives it some added strength on these corners. So when I'm stuffing it, it's not going to break the seams. Okay. And those seams will actually turn inside really nicely. Okay. So now this is the actual birthing part. I'm going to confess that when I first met you, I had no idea that you could make a stuffed animal at home. I thought that was only something you could buy in a store. Right. <laughs> so this is so amazing to me that, that you could do this for somebody you love. You could yeah. make them this stuffed animal and have it be this strong, this durable. I'm watching this adorable. All, all the, the love you put into making sure that the areas are reinforced so that, you know, <laughs> it'll last. And he's cute. Look at that. I mean, I mean, I mean, he seems his a little face deflated. Is a little, <laughs> trying to like push his head out and pull the other part of his head out. There we go. That's a little better. Look at this cute little face. He's pretty, pretty cute. Okay. So at this point, he is just, this is roadkill stage. Okay. This is where we're at. All right. So at this point, you're going to stuff him. You have to stuff all of these things individually. So you stuff his tail. I watched you and stuff, you stuff the, his arms, stuff the one his legs, tail, the all one, that good that, stuff. That by itself, stuff, stuffing the one tail took about 20 minutes. Yes. Yeah, so we're not going to stuff all of this <laughs> because it takes a while. But this is the stuffing. Oh, I lost the paper. This is the stuffing that we um, that she has on her website. It is Airlight. Okay. And um, that's what they have here. It's a little bit different than the stuff that I use. But what I liked about it is it's... I used in here yeah so this is the this i stuffed with the silky polyfill that i like okay super squishy this one is a little bit denser but it, it doesn't have the clumpiness that some of the other stuff does Got it. so i like it so depending on whether you want a monkey that's gonna like sit there um or you want one that you can squeeze to death um Depends on which kind of stuffing you might want to use. So this is what we have here. You're just going to pull it apart, stuff it into pieces, and then sew them shut. Okay. So I would suggest that you use a little egg time. Stuff it in. Stuff the whole thing. So the tail is the biggest pain in the rear. Because, <laughs> because you have to like shove something to shove all those little parts down there. It is a pain, in the, pain tail. in the tail. Yeah, exactly. So you're gonna have to kind of do little pieces at a time. What I found is if I get it down there and I kind of work it out a little bit and get it like less firm, um, it's a little bit better. So I will show you though. So you're gonna stuff it, ladder stitch those places closed, and then it looks like a monkey. All right, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one that just has the floppy tail. Okay, so. I'm not sure what happened there because I didn't sew this one. So I'm not sure why it has a floppy tail, but it does. Um, you can see this one. So if you want to bring in close to this, this one has been stitched with the, um, the thread as well, with the little bitty eyes, similar to the buttons that are in the, um, the kit that you're going to get. So those are the, about the same size eyes and same kind of style a little bit. And then she took this little stitch underneath his chin to pull his chin up. So you'll notice that this face looks a little different than this face. And, and that's, that's part a, of it. That's a great variation, okay. actually. Yeah, it's just a difference of how it is. Um, you can also squish them and make them. Whoa, where did his body okay. go? Because look at because you can also make them really kind of skinny. I've got no neck. See? You can make yeah. them kind of skinny or you can squish them and make them a little fatter. That's, that's okay? a lot. <laughs> also take out all of my aggression no just Aww. kidding so this one like we said this is the one that's 120 percent. oh and then you're gonna you're gonna sew these you gotta do the, the toesies mm -hmm. okay and what i did with these oh i wish i had can i i'm gonna show i'm gonna show in a weird way can i do that or should i take out okay i'm just gonna add another toe Okay. Side toe. Side toe. I shouldn't have finished it, but I was like, we're not going to have time to do all that. So this is what I do is I, and this may not be the correct way, but this is what I do is I pull this so that the thread just pops in. And then I take a tiny little stitch right here. 
and I don't pull this thread. Okay. I'm just, oh, except I pulled it out of the needle. And then it's kind of knotted in there. Oh, okay. okay. Then I I'm going to pull this over and I'm going to stab it back through in the same spot. To try to knot that again while it's in there. Sorry. Nobody saw it. it was oh, good. Camera. You know what she did. Nobody thought about it. We could talk <laughs> about it. You gotta lick your thread sometimes. It's just not kosher. Okay. So then I'm stick it back through to where the toe was, pull it through, and then yank it. And then we're gonna toe over here. We'll give him like, you know, five toes. I'm going to bring it over there. Okay, so it goes underneath. Do the same. Wrap it around. Stab it through the top. And back through here. Okay? okay. So that's how the toes are made. So that's exactly what I did for all of those. So you can't really see the toes up here, but you can on the bottom. This one, she added fingers. Nice. Which you could totally do. Okay, so she got a little more creative with hers than I got with mine, but that's, if it was made by Gail, that's why, because Gail's super creative, um, and she does all sorts of fun, really fun things, so I think hers has more toes than mine, no, same, but she also did, it looks like some stitching maybe across, super cute, super cute, so there you go, that's how the toes are made, so and then you add options. the face if you want to do the face differently, so again, this is, this one is done with the machine using that hem stitching. And then this one was done with just the embroidery thread. And there's a few different kinds of embroidery thread. You're going to get some in the kits, right? This is just some DMC. Uh, this is um, a different kind that I have. It's Feldera? Feldani, thank you. Um, that is actually different because it's just one thing of thread. And um, the DMC will be like the six strands. So on... This one, I actually split it on his toes to be, um, that's why you can see this one is thicker. This is six strands and these were three strands. Okay. Got it. So I just switched it. So I made it so that it was a little bit thinner lines in there. And I thought that worked out okay. All right. Look at all the monkey variations we have. So. And then we have another one. Monkeys. He's just, hello. <laughs> He's a little sad. <laughs> but he'll be really cute later. Okay, I'll finish stuffing him. I have another full one that it needs to be finished. We'll stuff him. And then we'll have five little monkeys. Just want to like... Okay. Blow them <laughs> up. It's really what he needs. It's really what he needs. All right. Thanks for sticking with me for so long. I knew it would be a long one because stuffed animals are not actually super fast. Okay. Um, and then you're going to take a little while to stuff them until I'm shut. And that's the way it works. All right. Any other questions we didn't answer there? No, I think we're good on, on construction. Okay, this was the tape. Thanks for bringing that over. This was the stuff that I was talking about. Oh, we're talking the, about earlier. Where we use the washi tape. Right. You so when you're, this. yeah. So if you want to use the correct stuff, this would be it. Okay. This works really well. I have some of this, I think, in my embroidery box in the back of the RV. Okay. Right. Um, all right. So do we have a, a winner? Uh, let's find out. Let's, winner, winner. There we go. Today's okay. winner is Amy L. Congratulations, Amy. So if you can message us on Facebook and let us know your mailing address, we will get you a beginner box kit. And we'll send that out to you, which is a super fun kit. If you haven't seen it in stores, it has three one yard pieces and six projects that you can make from those pieces. So um, it's a really great one that will teach you all sorts of uh, different skills of working with cuddle from making a scarf to making an actual ball. So super great kit. We'll send you one, Amy. Thanks so much for joining us for sharing. I want to let you know where we're going to be, what we're doing, all of that good stuff. Um, so next week is our Ask Us Anything. And Hawk and I will answer most every question that you ask. So if you... Uh, or we'll tap dance around them. Or we'll tap dance around them. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> but it's really fun because for every stop, we end up having people who ask us questions, the same questions over and over. And I thought, you know what? It's probably time that we just answer all the questions. So that's what we're doing. So if you want to leave a comment here on, if you're on Facebook, you can leave a comment on Facebook. Just make sure that you tag me in the comment. Okay, so that I know that it's a question for me and I can come back and answer that next week. Or you can email me and my email should pop up, which is just Teresa at shannonfabrics.com. And you can say like, 
AMA. And then you can ask me your questions in the email. We'll tag those in there. And then next week, we'll do a bunch of talking and then take questions live during from, from the show. RV live from the RV. So yeah. we'll show you the RV. You'll have lots of questions about that, what it looks like, the, the lifestyle. How do, we, how do we figure it out? What's inside? What do Hawk's paintings look like? That'll be fun. So we're going to do all sorts of stuff like that. It's going to be great. Okay. So ask the questions, get those in ahead of time. After that, we are heading. So 426. So April 26th, we will be at um, Bobbin and Bolt, which is in Richmond, Virginia. And then we're going to head west again. So we're going to kind of do a little zigzag. And we're going to go to Dayton, Virginia to Patchwork Plus. And we're going to be there. I think that's the one we're talking about. Applique. The week before, we're talking about embroidery, okay? And then we're going to um, meet up with Parker on the Porch, Jen from Parker on the Porch, who does an embroidery designs. Super cute stuff. And she has kind of revamped a pattern that she had uh, for a zipper pouch that we're going to make on the embroidery machine. I'm looking forward to that. And it has a little camping theme. So if you follow her, you've seen the project, which is super fun. Then we're going to have um, online only. We're going to talk about Lux Cuddle Slippers. Then on May 24th, we are going to be in Long Island at So What's New and Yarn 2 in Islip, New York, which is super exciting. I am looking forward to that because my kids will be there. I'm not looking forward to it because Hawk will be. Um, <laughs> I'm skedaddling. <laughs> He's skedaddling on me. On uh, June 7th and 8th, we are doing the Lammy Kit. So that will be a fun one. We are doing a two day. It might be a three day. We'll see how things go. Um, so we're going to do a whole Lammy kit. So if you have looked at that play mat, play mat kit and wanted to make it, this is uh, the great opportunity to do that. And the last of this season is June 14th at Bits and Pieces in Pelham, New Hampshire. So if you are anywhere near any of those places, all of the stores have some sort of a sign up on their website now. Or you can give them a call. Some of them are, um, you have to call to sign up for the classes. So give them a call, sign up, see you there. It'll be super fun. We'll have a ball. You'll get a swag bag. It'll be great. And then we're going to head off for about six weeks and take the summer off and then be back in the Midwest in the fall. So if you are in the Midwest and you're like, come to the Midwest, we are, I promise. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> we'll be there in like September-ish. So um, that'll be super fun. We're looking forward to it. Um, yeah, we're excited to be back on the road. It's going to be good. So uh, one other thing is want to make sure that you check out softerplace.org. It's our nonprofit leg where we do lots of charity work and you can help us do some good in the world and make the world a softer place. Is that all I've got for today? One more thing. One more thing. National Quilt Month giveaway winners. Did you talk about that morning? I did. Okay. I, I checked so. out. It's okay. It's okay. We had some winners. I'll say their names again. There were Dolores, Karen, and Kim were our winners for the National out. Quilting Month. Sorry. Pretty sure I did. I looked at the paper and saw the names. Um, they're a National Quilting Month giveaway winners. And um, <laughs> am I rolling towards you, Hawk? I'm oh, sorry. yeah. Yeah, um, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so there are else. winners so for last month we will have more giveaways yeah, if you are not part of our i love cuddle group yet please join us on facebook on i love cuddle fabric and uh yeah i think that's it the robe oh see there's so many things so many things that's the other one is tomorrow thank, thank you. you so tomorrow <laughs> so today we're doing the mitch the monkey in class and then tomorrow we're doing a robe class and we are doing a weird sort of thing that I don't do very often that we are doing a Zoom class with me and we are doing it live from Five Little Monkeys and she has the kits available for that robe. And that is that one. Well, let's do it. Try not to show the TV because it's just weird. Oh. Okay. So we're doing this robe and she's got a couple of different kit variations and uh, I'm going to be making a robe showing you how to do that. You can watch. So it'll basically be kind of like a sew together Tuesday as I'm going to make the robe and show you how to do it. You can watch it live with me. Ask, ask all your questions. If you buy the class, you can get the kit as well. She'll send you the kit and then you'll have access to the class. So you can make the the robe yourself later when you get all the fabric and you can watch it at your own speed. So that'll be really helpful. So tomorrow you can join us and just watch it, ask all the questions, figure out what you're going to do. And then when you get the kit, you can make it yourself on your own schedule, which I think will be really helpful. So if you can't watch all of it tomorrow as well, you are welcome to um, just get the zoom later so that you can sign up for it on their website, fivemonkeyquilts.com. Okay, you can go over there and sign up for the Lux Robe class because I will be teaching that and I really don't teach Zoom classes. So that'll be super fun. I'm excited to do it. So looking forward to it. All right. I think that's it's everybody. It. We got everybody. We got all the list. <laughs> so much monkey things. business. So much monkey business. More fun than a barrel of monkeys. Thanks for joining us again. I will see you next week from Richmond, Virginia. 
Anna. Until then, happy sewing.